Goes from Henrique to the far side. Save made by the Blues. Goaltender Bennington. He denied Henrique and Ekholm. And now to the far wing. McLeod lost it. Side. Breakaway. In. Shoots. Score! Tuesday, it's a fast lane on 101 ESPN. That's right, baby. The Blues. Are back. We are back. We are back. We are so the back. Last night, yes. oh, Jordan Bennington, disgusting. I as told always. you. I said it. He didn't get the shutout. He didn't get the shutout. But my gosh, did he make some saves? Hey. Breakaway save on Leon Drysaddle with that the game was on the line. Disgusting. I don't know what was more disgusting. That save. Or the tic-tac-toe goal that they scored, the the second goal. For Shanner's goal? Yes. Yeah. That was pretty, too. How about Braden Shen? I love it for him, man. In the moment of need, your team always likes to lean on their captains, their leaders, right? Mm -hmm. He bangs home two goals last night. Huge. It's a great game for him. Blues are back, baby. Blues are back in the playoff mix. Well, for now, man. Now when I'm wearing these glasses. (laughs) Blues are back in it. Let's make the playoffs. Let's go on a run. 2019 style. What did I tell you, Kerry? You said it. I mean, I said, it's coming to fruition. Your moves that, to the you deadline. Said exactly what's I'll, taking place uh, 2019. Right now. Yep. I, who knows, right? Who knows? Who you, really knows? You knew. Really knows. Well, I did. You knew. Yeah, How about Brandon right. Saad becoming Mr. Delivery Guy? That was awesome. Like, uh, he's got, what, seven or eight goals here recently? I got to pull up the numbers, but another game winner for him that it's at seven on the year and that puts him 11th in the nhl for mm-hmm. game winning goals and recently he's the one that's been getting the game tying or the game winning goal this one here is was a a, a direct replica of i think it was a was it the minnesota game marshy which one did we go to overtime where yeah he scored five uh, against hole. minnesota yeah. five hole Cut against in, flurry five hole. Hole. no yeah it was uh let's yeah. see it was january 22nd Look cloudy outside it was a little cloudy outside yeah. uh i was About drinking degrees at the uh chicken salad for lunch <laughs> i did yep, yep. <laughs> it was a saturday afternoon it that's, was that's when marsh breaks down everything that happened in a game for, especially for the blues so yeah jordan Cairo, uh i believe had a hat trick that day huh? there you go there you go jordan Cairo came up empty on the one last night, try to elevate it, but hey, at least he was, you know, the side of the net. Who? Kyra. Oh yeah, sure. He we didn't. There. We didn't pick our. We didn't pick our uh, first goal of the game. No, no we didn't. We didn't. And, and why did we forget that? We I forgot had everything. mine written down, and you oh, all. Oh wow, yeah. that's it's ridiculous. That's it's weird. Yeah. That's weird. It's it looks ridiculous. like the paper that we're using and today. Don't focus on that. Yeah, focus on same, what I wrote yesterday. The same, it's uh, the photo paper. Yeah. Photo paper. Or the case. label maker. I, I wrote it yesterday. Yeah. And Did you? It, I just happened to have this sheet in here when we walked uh, in. I was like, uh, ah, you're full I gotta of bring sheet, right? I like when Marsh uses this paper, though. Hey, this was not me. It's our rundown for today. It was not me today. Who did it? Snake. Our Snake friend Josh. See our wait, wait, today. wait. Did Josh go to your computer and click print? No, I hit print. There was no paper in the printer. Uh-huh. And then Josh, as I'm coming back from the bathroom, Josh goes, ah, there's no paper in the printer. Let me put some in. And I was like, wow, that's really nice of you. And then all of a sudden, this paper started coming out. Ah. And then he started saying some stuff. And I'm sure people... Could probably Josh put two and Guinness. two together. Yeah. Yes. From yeah. Case First of all, sister thank sister. you, Josh, for yeah. stepping up. I mean, you know, could Marshy without him, we wouldn't have had these. Yeah. I mean, um, second of all, that it is problematic. Those copiers, they've run out of paper before, and we have a huge copier in the promo pit, they call it. Yeah. There's not one stack of paper anywhere around there. The extra paper is all the way down the other end of the building at the, the, the supplies closet. <laughs> yeah. Call me crazy, but why don't we move like, I don't know, four or five 
things of paper over to where the actual copier is. Well, why don't we do that? Then we wouldn't have to worry mm. about labels or picture paper or whatever yes. it is. Poor, this poor is Josh. A sample. Mm. Poor Josh had to improvise on the fly. Right. The oh, I appreciate it. It was a real team effort. It was. You know, I printed it out. He put the paper in. That's exactly what we saw last night from the Cardinals and the Blues. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. All right, Jamie, your your biggest takeaway from last night's game, was it Bennington? <laughs> was it some of the things that you already discussed before with Zod or Shen? Um... For me, I mean, it all starts with Jordan Bennington. It starts and ends with the goaltending this year. It just does. And as a team, they played a hard game, man. Tyler Tucker gets in, understands the assignment, gets gritty right in Carrick's face right away in the first period, then goes after Evander Kane and throws down. Evander Kane's a tough dude. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how that one was going to end up. Tyler Tucker held his own pretty good in that one there. But it just goes to show you, like, the frame of mind for yesterday's game was much different. Had the Blues approached the Sharks game in its entirety, the way they approached last night's game, it would have been 4 nothing Blues in that game. And I think that that's where it gets frustrating for the coaching staff, the fans, everybody who wants the Blues to win, including the players, is you're capable of these types of performances, mm-hmm. yet you let it go dormant at times. So now you've got, you know, you're three points out of a playoff spot. I mean, here we are again. Right there. Uh, Huge game against Nashville on Thursday. The LA Kings play the Sharks on Thursday. So hopefully the Sharks find their A game for another game. At least an A game for a second period (laughs) against the uh, LA Kings. But then the Kings play the Canucks on Saturday and the Blues play the Sharks. Mm. So here we go again. Yeah. Well, fortunately, Winnipeg steps up last night for for the Blues because they beat the Kings. Yeah, they did. Also, also. It helped uh, Jamie had a Rivers. Good night. Yeah, you did. You really did. You had and you had Donovan, Donovan, Donovan in the home win. run. Yep. Which was a three, three point pointer. effort. Yeah. So <laughs> Jamie's up three nothing on everybody in the home run derby. It's okay. And it's time. also it's a long season. It's a long season. It is, but Jamie Jamie usually does, he starts he starts very fast <laughs> typically. <laughs> Doesn't finish well. No, he, he's okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a couple of big finishes. <laughs> usually. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I caught you last. I caught you last year. Yeah, and on, the, on the, uh, the home run derby. And then remember, we had well, to pick we just, the entire yeah. lineup. <laughs> we got to a point where we were running out of games to mm-hmm. pick. It was the playoffs. It was the playoffs. Oh, okay. So we were like, okay, you pick six, I'll pick six <laughs> players off of both teams. And who ended up winning? Did I end up winning? You, yeah, no, you did. Yep, you so did. I can wait to win, I'll tell you that. Like Corey Seeger hit a home run or something. <laughs> I know we had both. We, had, we, we picked, we like did a. a a popcorn draft. Yeah, we just kept yeah. going back and forth. Anyways, long story short. Um, so the Blues, again, the Blues get it done last night. Huge win. I, I agree, Jamie. I agree with you. And, Kerry, I, I wonder how you feel as well. But when you say that effort last night, you watch that effort last night, that that effort, that performance, we've seen that before mm-hmm. at times this season. We've also, unfortunately, seen the second period against the Sharks play out at various times. Yeah. You get fr- that's the most frustrating aspect of this Blues team. It's in there. How do they unlock it on a consistent basis? Yeah. That's the question. That has been the question virtually from game one this year. Well, we talked about it yesterday, bringing the fight, right? Bringing the guys into the fight, both literally and figuratively. And Shen did that yesterday. He brought his teammates. Tyler he Tucker did. brought the fight, literally. And so you have to have that every night, though. And I think that's probably the most frustrating thing about this Blues team is because you know – they can go out and win a game like that, and then they lay an egg against the San Jose Sharks, and you're like, what the hell are we watching? Why is yeah. it so inconsistent? It's probably, if you're really good or really bad, most people can stomach that. But I think when you're up and down like this, and you don't know from game to game, night to night, which one, which team is going to show up, it's probably the most frustrating thing, both as a coach, as a fan, as a player. Like you're watching a team that has a lot of talent, that has the capability to make a run because of the goaltending and how well it's been performing. You got a chance to do something special, but are you going to do it every single night? Are you willing? And it's it's not a talent thing. It's a will thing. Like, it's, it's a, do I want to do uh-huh. this every single day? It's a day? will and a focus thing. Yes. They locked in. Mm-hmm. Do I want to do it every single day? And... If they do, they can be a really good team. So I compare, after watching last night, I compare the Blues to a cat. Okay? <laughs> I, I do not like Hear me that. out, Gary. I'm not a fan of cats. No, I understand, but yeah, just for the purpose of the All exercise. Right. Just, like a big cat or a house cat? Um, mm. you know, probably, the tiger is the biggest yeah. cat in the big cat family. <laughs> good job. No, this Brandon. would be a um, <laughs> domestic cat. <laughs> okay. So pick your favorite domestic cat, whatever it is. Okay? I have one. Cat. And you ever notice how when 
you really want the cat to love you and like you want to like go pet the cat. The cat wants nothing to do mm. with you. Right? So that's the blues. When you really need them to play against crappy teams, eh, they're not interested. Yeah. But then when you ignore the cat because you're so ticked off and you've given up on the cat, <laughs> then the cat comes over and mm. snuggles up next to you and starts petting its own face with your arm and all this stuff. And you're like, oh, wow, that's the blues when they play well against the good teams. Then they draw you back and you're like, oh, it's a pretty cat. I love this cat. Mm -hmm. And then the next game, you might go to pet the cat and the cat might run away or might bite you. Mm. And so this is what I compare it to for the season of, you know, being a blues fan is yeah. they're like cats, guys. They're very complex mm -hmm. and um, a little bit uh, bipolar, too, yeah. to where you don't mm. know mm. exactly what Which version gonna show you're going sure. to get. And heaven forbid you pet the cat the wrong way, because when you ah, do that, you that's an automatic scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those can get really infected. Mm. Okay, so basically we have to ignore the blues. Uh, heading into their matchup against the Predators. Let's not get too fired up, right? Yeah, on Thursday. That's right. We just yeah. don't get too fired up. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just a yeah, Predator. It's a, game, uh, it's a tough game, Predator. Then they'll mm -hmm. show up. Mm -hmm. I like that, Jamie. Are, you're welcome. Yeah, I like that. Interesting creatures. They Marsh, are. what do you got? We got a text from the 314. You guys spent an entire winter complaining about the pitching. We get good pitching, and you lead with a sorry-ass Blues team teasing you again. <laughs> hey, 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 That's a borderline <laughs> playoff team. You kind of owe Gibby and Lynn an apology. I'll, I'll apologize to Gibby. I'm not giving. Lynn did okay, but he he got those bases loaded. He was able to get that, out of it. That right there, that text, <laughs> is part of the problem. That's next on 101 ESPN. <laughs> At r, r Tire Express, it has never been easier to get the tires that you need and the wheels that you want. Now through April 15th, request a quick quote, and r, r will pay half your first month's payment. That's half of your first month's payment, again, until April 15th. And when r, &R says quick quote, they do mean quick. We're talking about 60 seconds tops. That's it. Simply submit your contact info, vehicle year, make, and model on r, &R tires.com to secure your half-off offer today. And don't worry. Requesting a quote is a no-commitment inquiry. r and Tire Express offers flexible payment options. Everyone's approved, no credit needed. Plus, you'll enjoy peace of mind coverage that includes free tire installation, free rotations, free flat repair, and more. Let the r and Tire Express team pay half your first month on all in-stock tires and wheels when you request a quick quote at r and tires.com. Of course, you can pick up the phone as well and call 1-833-ROLL-NOW. Again, 1-833-ROLL-NOW. Roll now, and you can do so today at rnrtires.com.
you always want to get your first one out of the way and, and have it go well. And, um, you know, it's good also when things that you work on in between starts and, you know, for the last couple of weeks of spring training can go out there and you can use them and, and get results with it. But um, just a really good team win. You know, defense played awesome tonight. Willie and I were on the same page for all however many pitches. Um, but the defense won some really good double plays and, and walk went airborne out there for a great play too. So those guys did a great job and helped me out. That was Kyle Gibson following a phenomenal performance last night against the San Diego Padres. Now, Marsh. Gibby, 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 Gibby. You went one too many. I went one too many. You went five. Why? Well, I was, honestly, I was You know the rule. I thought it was four. It's four. No, it's my fault. It is four. Yeah. Kerry, I know you're new to the show, but but you're 100% right. That's my fault. This is all your fault. Yeah. Gibby, 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 Gibby. He was phenomenal last night. He really was. uh, Pitched very well. Uh, We got a text message right before we broke uh, the last segment that Marsh read off. Marsh, can you read that again? Yeah, no, I don't have it. Everyone's texting in. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) Basically, to paraphrase, yeah, to uh, paraphrase that uh, we led the we led the show off talking about the the blues Mm -hmm. when all winter we had been complaining about the pitching. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want to read it? Yeah, you guys spend an entire winter complaining about the pitching. We get good pitching, and you leave with the sorry ass blues team teasing you again. You owe Gibby and Lynn an apology. Talking to you. Okay, so let's let's unpack this for a second, okay? Uh, Anthony, I'll hand it off to you in just in just a second. In fact, you know what? You're eager. You go for it. <laughs> yeah, this might be Anthony. Yeah, I mean, who knows? That's why I just just, don't, just let it what out. What about man. raging rivers? No, this wasn't going to be raging rivers. <laughs> oh, okay. so. we we owe we owe Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson and apologies. Mm-hmm. That's what they say. Three and four for doing their jobs. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, do I have it clear? Well, you bad mouthed them quite a bit. You basically bad, said they I couldn't do mouth, their job. I bad mouthed the pitching staff. Are they part of the pitching staff? I bad mouthed the Cardinals for putting together an average pitching staff. Mm. And you want me and my cohorts here to apologize when two guys have, well, one, one had an excellent start. That was Kyle Gibson, and he was excellent. Absolutely. And one for battling through a rough start. You want apologies to those guys? Really? It's part yeah, of, kind of, Anthony. It's like, part of the mentality, Jamie. No, but I, but I kind <laughs> of understand I, it. I want a team. you ran your mouth quite a bit, really. Yeah, it was only me. <laughs> I want I a team, Jamie, <laughs> for our fan base here in St. Louis to be proud of. An actual contender. A pitching staff that's going to shove... Not for one and a half nights or four innings, and he didn't really even shove, but for an entire season. Because here in St. Louis, we expect titles. It's baseball heaven, is it not? It is. Yeah. It, it isn't. Let's just have a couple of decent starts, and then we'll start congratulating him again. I'm sorry. When did the expectations become so low here? Wow, winds are good. You drinking the Cardinal Kool Aid a little too much from the front office? That no. texter. Maybe. Oh, you're mad at the texter. I thought this was St. Louis. <laughs> I thought he's I've mad always at me. been mad. No, I'm not <laughs> mad at you. I'm mad at the texter. Why are you mad at the texter? Because they, they, they want to be positive. Because they want to be positive after yesterday's crap show we had of just being negative, and we all felt it. Hey, that like was, it was a great show. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay? Let's, let's back it up. Yeah, thank you. It's a great you. show. It was a great show. But it was meant, filled with negativity. It just filled with negativity. Did which, you see the weekend? Uh, which felt I don't know okay, that it was, I felt but like, yeah, I it felt was a point. little dirty nah, leaving I here. Good. I mean, for more reasons than one, of course. Well, why, but, would you you know, why don't we all stay positive? But here, Anthony, let me do this. Let me shove this back in your face. Fine. Okay? <laughs> Is Lance Lynn goes out there. You oh, call it. You call it. Hey. Go ahead. Put on your listening ears. Go ahead. I, okay? I, I, Just I, like you tell your kids. I know you're a great parent. <laughs> and no, don't block your ears. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Look at this, there you go. For a reason. Listen twice as much as you, as you talk. There you mm. go. Gary yep. got it. Go ahead. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, too. <laughs> uh, so, with Lance Lynn, he goes out there. It wasn't a Picasso. No problem. Mm-hmm. But this is why you got a veteran guy like that. Is he battled through it? He just said, screw it. And he kept it clean. He only went four innings, rain delay, all that stuff. That's what he's paid for. I know, Anthony. It's his job. It's been his job for a long time. But he actually did it. Mm-hmm. Now, the one person that we've skipped over here, which is why I want to go back to it, Stephen Matz had a good outing. Mm-hmm. The team didn't support him at the end, and we, we know how it ended up, but Stephen Matz had a good outing. So that's 
two of the veteran guys in your staff that had good outings. I'm not gonna, I'm not calling them all stars. I'm okay. not giving them star of the week. Mm -hmm. But then Kyle Gibson goes out yesterday. He shoves. He yes. had a great game. He did. So three of the question marks that you had in this rotation. Mm -hmm. Now we know that Michaelis was a question mark, but we we assumed at the start of the season, Sonny Gray, Miles Michaelis, like we know what we're gonna get. The question marks were. Lance Lynn, Stephen Matz, and Kyle Gibson. What are we going to get from those guys? And those three guys, to a man, went out and pitched well. So that's why I think we can be a little positive about it. Like, does it mean that they don't get blown up the next time? I don't know. But really, let's let's focus back on Miles Michaelis. Tonight is his start again. Mm -hmm. He, I, it's going to sound crazy, but I want Michaelis to give me a performance equal to Lynn, Matz, or Gibson, which I never thought I'd say that. Do you see my point? I do. What do you want? What do you, you want me to, wanna, you want me to congratulate? I'm not celebrating you. you it, no. Well, it kind of sounds like you want to celebrate. <laughs> this is where one you start time, to tick me off. One time through the this rotation. This is where you start to tick me off. Well, well welcome just to you, my life. I'm trying to help you. Because you tick me off consistently. <laughs> I don't care, though. It's different. You know that. <laughs> it's not different because I don't care that different. I'm ticking you off. <laughs> <laughs> Once I'm through the rotation, you want me to throw a parade? No, you donkey. I'm just saying that what we can do is at least identify that there was some okay pitching. That's it. I have. That's it. No, I you have haven't. Say, no, you I have. You came on. That's your job. I You're a text have. guy. But that's text what they're guy, paid for. No, text guy. First of all, we all and talked you hate about that statement. We all talked about Stephen Matz Carrie, pitching you know, well he yesterday. Hates that one. We all talked about Stephen Matz pitching well yesterday. This this dude can't wait 15 minutes for us to talk about the Blues, who are nearing the end of the season, don't, to don't talk drag, about the Cardinals. Don't, don't drag. five games into the season. <laughs> don't drag them across the coals. Games. Don't drag them across the This coals. guy can't wait 15 minutes for us to talk about the Blues to 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 talk about a great effort for the Blues, who are trying to fight to get in the playoffs. Yeah. Because he he wants us to throw a parade for for one time through the rotation. Two guys pitch well. I don't think you he want Lynn? I'm not going to give you Lynn. Home of the Blues. I'm not going to give you a win. <laughs> That's a good point, too. Yeah. 101 ESPN, home of the Blues. Blues Radio Network. We yeah. would have, if, if, if we just relax a little bit, we would have got to the outstanding performance out of, out of Kyle Gibson last and night. And it was outstanding. He did you weren't even job. getting there. You wanted to hyper focus on Lance Lynn. What's your pro, whatever your problem I'm is? I'm not going to apologize Lynn, for know. Lance Lynn loading the bases 687 times. But he and also could have thrown it. a watermelon you, and had it crushed. And, and he maybe did it. next time he will. And maybe next time he won't load the bases. We can play this game all day long. Let's do it. What was Lance Lynn? How was Lance Lynn a year ago? How was he two Did years ago? Did you like ago? that performance? No. Last I hated year? it. We gave up 900 home I runs? I hated it. Led the league. You want me to apologize to him now? No. no. I'll pitch well. Oh, my God. Continue yeah. to pitch well. <laughs> I, I think you should league. apologize to the Marshy. texter. Why? Marshy. Oh. Marshy. You're right. Hey, okay. Marshy, I've had enough. What's trending next here on 101 ESPN? <laughs>Let's talk about some home runs, baby. My guy last night, Brendan Donovan. Touch ben seats, Diabo, baby. Diabo, touching seats out there. And right now, FanDuel has a great promotion called Dinger Tuesdays. And you'll love home runs even more. And Dinger Tuesdays, they're back for another full season on America's number one sports book. And what it is, Kerry, is you just bet on a player to hit a homer. And FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. Yeah, Jamie, as if you need it, more reasons to love the long ball. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash fast to get in on all the Dinger Tuesday action. You can pick who you want and see if they hit a home run. That's right. It's like Brendan Donovan last night for Jamie. Jamie called that one. He's up in our home run challenge. So follow Jamie. Get his advice. Or maybe you just want to fade uh, carry me, Marsh. If you want to do that, that's fine, too. Yeah. Either way, it's up to you. <laughs> FanDuel.com slash fast. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 or older and present in Illinois. Bo bonus this year does not want trouble. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues win 3 2 in overtime over the Edmonton Oilers. They are now three points behind the LA Kings for that final wild card spot. They'll have a chance to continue winning against the Nashville Predators Thursday. Right here on 101 ESPN, pregame starts at 6, puck drop is at 7, and you can catch all the action, like I said, right here on 101 ESPN. The Cardinals picked up the victory last night, 6-2 to two against San Diego. They'll be back at it tonight, 8:40 first pitch as Miles Michaelis takes the mound, going up against Hugh Darvish. We have What's Trending coming up next right here in the Fast Lane. I'm Andrew Marsh, and this Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Sports World with What's Trending Now. Brought to you by Goodwill. Donate a car and get tickets to the St. Louis Cardinals. Welcome back to the Fast Lane here on 101 ESPN with Anthony Stalter, Jamie Rivers, and Kerry Davis. I'm Andrew Marsh, and it's time for What's Trending. Gentlemen, of course, yesterday, everyone here in St. Louis was watching the Cardinals, the Blues, but there was also a women's college basketball game last night. Iowa taking on LSU to go to the women's Final Four, and Caitlin Clark dropped 40, 94-87, the final score. I'm sorry, Kerry, yeah. LSU goes down. They didn't. They didn't. No, well, Kaylin Clark was pulling up from everywhere. Like, Kelly, uh, Haley Van Lith was having a little bit of trouble. Gardner. It was not a great match and, uh, up there. See, it's she, just kind of going around her. It was, it was, it was a rough night. But uh, Kaylin Clark is special. Like, she can shoot it. She can play. She made a couple of great passes um, for layups to her teammates. Like, very good court vision. Just plays the game. It was, it was a good game. It was fun to watch. Unless you tried to keep it close, but then kind of. Uh, I was at pull away. Sorry, Kerry. That, that one LSU girl who her job was to guard, Caitlin Clark, yeah. the yeah. blonde haired girl. Haley, Haley, Haley 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 okay. Yeah. I feel bad for her. She had Halfway a night. through, I wanted to be like a dad and be like, I just want to give her a hug. Yeah. yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's like she was guarding, I don't want to say Michael Jordan, that's strong, but someone who was just so good. So much. Caitlin ba- Clark was toying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was dribbling, spinning around, spinning mm-hmm. this way, draining a three-pointer from like NBA yep. three-point land. Yeah. And beyond. And beyond. Damian Lillard style. Yeah. I was like that poor girl. She going left, pulling up. Like it, Haley Van Lith had a, it was a rough night. Like <laughs> she went around her a couple of times and Angel Reese was like, what the hell are we doing here? Mm-hmm. She's in the post, in the paint, trying to defend the area. And then, uh, Caitlin Clark just dumps it off to, to the person that uh, Angel was regarding. So it was a rough night mm-hmm. for uh, LSU. At some point, as much as you love your players, you guys, hey, let me get somebody else on her. Yeah. So double her up. <laughs> Something. I take my chances with somebody else somebody shooting on you. Right. Yeah. Because if she, if Caitlin Clark isn't exceptional last night, I don't know if they were. Right. Like, she couldn't be great. She definitely couldn't be good. She definitely couldn't be average. She had to be exceptional, and she yeah. was. And and you talk about like the performances that you guys are talking about. That that was at the biggest stage as well. Like you, she's tw- This is not a uh, a game in November. No. This is this is to punch your tickets to the well, final and four. This is not just any opponent. This is not right. This is the one that got <laughs> you. Come on, man. No, yeah. Defending national champion. Yep. yep. So the uh, congratulations, Iowa UConn is going to be a good game. Paige Certainly. Becker's back healthy. She's a she's a baller too. So yeah, UConn with a long, yeah. rich tradition. You know, Ariema is uh, he's probably yes. just smiling, just happy to have his 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 star back. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we we've been laying in the weeds for a little while. Mm-hmm. Lying in the weeds. Now, now it's our time. Serrano is just you know he's lying in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I brought this up to you in the uh, in the office. Asturi Ruiz of the Oakland A's has been demoted to AAA, even though he's back. Batting 429, has an OPS of 1.232, has one RBI and a stolen base. Not good enough, I guess, uh, to the Oakland A's. No, that's too good. They want to be terrible. Um, he's, he's performed a little too well. Yeah. Jamie's right. They teach his kid a lesson. Yeah. So <laughs> that's not what they want. You're an Oakland A's, son. What are you doing? I don't know what you think you're doing here. <laughs> so, I love a good sports conspiracy theory, and there is some going out right now about uh, about the Oakland A's, and there is a 
online store called Last Dive Bar, and basically it says that they're a premier online store for unique and stylish apparel that celebrates the iconic Oakland Coliseum. However, they're basically a... Uh, a boycott and sell the team type uh, of group. And uh, they have these wristbands that say the last dive bar. And there are four players on the Oakland A's that have been pictured wearing said wristbands. These four players have been demoted, benched, <laughs> traded, and released. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, take that information and do with, do, do with it what you will. So, yeah, the Oakland A's are tanking. They want to make sure that they get to Vegas and they don't need players not supporting the cause. Yep. Here, here's a, I was, I, cause when you brought it up, I started scrolling and one of the, uh, one, one of the headlines says Oakland athletics send young Ricky Henderson as three Ruiz down mm -hmm. like young Ricky Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> probably not going to endear. I, I know you don't care about the people in Oakland at now. this point, right? Yeah. Nah, you're not worried about them. This is the, uh, a real life major league story. <laughs> yes. You know, right, win the what, what, whole damn thing. Exactly. <laughs> they, they've got they've got that owner trying <sighs> to move the team, put together a, a horrible team, and she's trying to now trade anybody that's that's somewhat decent or demote them. It's terrible. It's, it's terrible. Terrible with what's going on with the Oakland A's. Anthony, this just in. Uh, stay tuned here to the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Looks like we're going to have our very own Kyle Gibson on here at 5 p.m. Nice. Oh, right. There you go. Yeah, so Gibby going to join us to talk his game last night, talk a little Cardinals baseball. Phenomenal start last night for Gibby. First time in a Cardinals uniform in the regular season. Pitch as well. All right, so 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, Kyle Gibson will join us here in the Fast Lane. Yeah. Nice work there, Jamie. Yeah, thank you. He's just a great dude. He is. He is. You you participated in his charity event, right? Uh, the, the one one of them, not the one I, the one I wanted to, I couldn't to. That's their when they do their shooting, yeah. the, the clay shooting and all that. That's supposed to be awesome. Hopefully that invite stands here in the future. But done a couple other things. He, he he's a big uh, part of big league impact and all yes, that stuff. Absolutely. So, yeah. Marsh, you got anything else for us for what's training? I do. Everyone's excited for Jimmy Snuggerud yeah. to be a Teach Saint me Louis Blue, Snuggie, baby. Teach yeah. me how to Snuggie. Well, they'll have to wait because Whoa. he's heading back to what? Minnesota. Uh, yeah. All right, well, let's get into that then next. He didn't want to be a Blue. <laughs> he didn't want to be a Blue. We'll mm. tell you why next on 101 ESPN. When it comes to the Missouri Athletic Club, I love being a club member. There are so many things that I like to do throughout the course of the week, whether it's working out or working for the business center, just grabbing something to eat, talking with the other club members uh, about what they do. Uh, there's so many things going on. But when it comes to involving the family, oh, man, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. I mean, the Easter egg hunt, they got the Easter brunch that just happened. But now that it's April, they've got different events for the family that you can get involved with when it comes to either the West Clubhouse or the downtown spot of the MAC. It's a perfect, perfect spot to get the, the family involved or for you as an individual. They have so many things going on within the club, whether it's athletics or social events. It's perfect. Missouri Athletic Club, my MAC.
passes it through center, forcing Bricky to go back to get it, but he fanned on it. Snuggerud between oh, the legs. Oh. What a goal by Snuggerud between his own wickets, and then he beats Turnus, and Minnesota on the road draws first blood on that beauty from Jimmy Snuggerud. So we're getting a lot of questions on social media about Jimmy Snuggerud now and what happens now that he is not going to uh, be a blue. And, Jamie, you were joking when we teased it out. Was you said, I? oh, he doesn't want to be a blue. You were. <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, break, like, break to, everything break down, this for, down us. for Yes, you? please. Right, so Jimmy Snuggerud, the blues own his rights until 2026. So they have until that point to sign him to a contract. And right now, Jimmy Snuggerud chose to go back to Minnesota. I don't know why, ultimately. Here is my thoughts. Uh, I was not in the room or on the phone with Army and his representatives. But I can imagine that Jimmy Snuggerud's representatives wanted him to come straight to the NHL. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not, mm. see, do not visit the Springfield Falcons straight to St. Louis Blues. And I, I think Doug Armstrong probably said that that's not going to work for him, mm -hmm. that the player would be in St. Louis if he deserves it, but if he needs time in the minors, he'll play in the American Hockey League because Army, that's, like, that's almost like giving Army the, hey, no movement clause. Like my player's going to go where we tell him to go, not where you want him to go. I don't see Army vibing with that, and I'm sure that Army said something to the effect of if he deserves it, he'll play. And Snug Roots Camp probably said, mm, we're not getting the 100% sure. Let's go back for another year. Going to have a really good team again in Minnesota. They have anticipations of running it up for a national championship. The captain of the Gophers signed with the Boston Bruins. Jimmy Snuggerud was an assistant captain. Would lead me to believe that Snuggy might take over as the captain. That's a big year for him, too. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that Jimmy Snuggerud can still accomplish at the collegiate level. And it's not bad to marinate for another year, get bigger, stronger, faster, score more goals. Why not, right? Yeah. And then you come back to the bargaining table, hopefully with a stronger resume. And then maybe next time when you come back and you ask to go straight to the NHL, maybe it's no question. But the Blues did not lose Jimmy Snuggerud. They're not going to lose him to other teams. He will not go back in the draft. Um, if he decides to become an unrestricted free agent in 2026, that will be Jimmy Snuggerud's choice because the Blues are, are going to offer him a contract. They probably already have offered him a contract, mm -hmm. and, but that would mean Snuggy would have to go back for junior year and senior year and then become an unrestricted free agent. I don't think that's the path that Snuggy wants. I think that he wants to be back for the junior year, be the captain of the Gophers, make a run at the national championship. If they fall short, sign with the Blues, and start his NHL journey. Sure. So that's what I think. Uh, I asked you earlier, what do you feel like his ceiling is? Like, do you think he is a, a first-liner just fresh out of college, or is he going to have to, as you say, get more seasoned and, and yeah. work his way up? This is always the hardest part, Kerry, and you know this too. Like, in football, it's a little different because mm -hmm. the college, like your first-rounders in football ordinarily turn out to be some kind of a franchise player at their position. Right. Right. It's not the same in hockey. It's just not. Your top five picks are usually guaranteed to be longtime NHLers. Mm -hmm. After that, the percentages are even less than that they play 100 games in the NHL. So I'm not saying that Jimmy Snuggerud falls into that category. To me, he falls into an NHL player category, but what's his ceiling? I don't know. Right. I've never seen him play against the L.A. Kings. Mm. I've never seen him play against Kale McCarr. I've never seen him play against the Vegas Golden Knights and their oak trees back on defense. Like, right. So it's all undetermined. And a lot of people are like, well, he projects to be this. But you don't know that. Right. Yeah. You don't. Like, he projects to be Steven Stamkos. N really? <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I'll take it. Yeah. But let's pump the brakes a little bit. So Jeremy Rutherford had this statement posted on Twitter at J.P. Rutherford from Jimmy Snuggerud. Snuggerud in a statement, quote, It was a tough ending to this season, and I feel like we have some unfinished business to accomplish. I'm committed to this team and excited for the opportunity next year with the Gophers. I watched Brock Faber 
come back from his junior 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 year, and I feel like I can take the same path as Brock to the NHL and help the Gophers win a national championship. Doug Armstrong, in a statement on Snugger, said, after talking to Jimmy and his family the past couple of days, the organization fully supports his decision to commit to another season at the University of Minnesota. He continued, we look forward to watching his continued development towards becoming a solid contributor for the St. Louis Blues in the future by playing a lead role for the Golden Gophers against top college competition next year. Yeah. What is the difference? What do you mean? Collegiately versus the AHL. Well. I know there's various levels, the, but. It, if I'm Jimmy Snuggerud, like, I, I would have played in the American Hockey League. You're advancing your career right away. You're finding out quickly. And I've said this before, and people, you know, sometimes people turn their nose up at the American Hockey League, but you have to understand that every single team in the AHL has somebody, a group of players that could play in the NHL right now. Mm -hmm. They do. But maybe they're a little too old, or they're going with the youth movement, or you know, whatever it is. Like, Callie Rosen's an NHL hockey player. He's playing in Springfield this year. Yeah. There's, every team has those guys. And so when you get a guy like Jimmy Snuggerud to play against the best at that level is beneficial. And I'm not saying that playing against the best at the collegiate level is not. But w the way I look at it is in his development curve right now, he's kind of hit the peak. Maybe a little bit of a bump next year, but was it 21 goals two years in a row or 31 goals two years in a row, Marshy? I don't know off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, I think it was 20. But his numbers were down this year from His numbers last were year. down a little bit, but that's, you know, it's neither here nor there. But to me, it's like he's going to plateau at the college level. And things become a little easier, which means you don't have to push as much. I know this. It happened to me playing junior hockey as well. Like, you get to a certain comfort level, and you're like, yeah, I can just do this. Mm -hmm. And you can. You go out there and just dominate. Whereas at the American Hockey League level, like, he's going to be challenged every single night He's going to be put in big situations, going to play a lot of minutes. It's, to me, going to the American Hockey League would probably speed up his process to get into the NHL. Like by November or December next year, he could be in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to have to wait at least until April next year. What does it say about his character, though, that he wants to stay and be a part of that team and try and win a championship? He's going to, like you said, probably be the captain of that team. It's not like it's one of the lower level college hockey programs like we're talking about the minnesota and golden gophers here like this is a huge hockey program what does it say about his character though that he wants to try and win with that group of guys instead of putting his own uh selfish needs ahead of his team yeah so let's just be honest okay it's all about it's all about me mm -hmm. like it's all about the player like jimmy you don't think jimmy snuggery wants to sign a bigger signing bonus wants oh, to make more sure. money of course he does right so but both of those topics are that you just brought up are mm -hmm. separate entities because there's the individual side of it and i was just looking at like from an individual development standpoint for sure for me the american hockey league what that does it accelerates his path to the nhl mm -hmm. now from a team standpoint and character and being a leader there are a lot of benefits for jimmy snuggrew to go back to college to be the guy to be the captain to have that role to be a leader all that stuff mm -hmm. which will help develop the overall player mm -hmm. that comes to the nhl so there's benefits to both sides of it i, I think that one more year is the max though like, if he tried to go back for his senior year, yeah. now he's taking steps backwards. What does this Blues team need, though? Do they need a guy who is going to go to the AHL and, you know, develop a little bit better? Does he, Or, or do they need, like, a, a character leader in, in this locker room? Well, they need guys like Jake Neighbors. Mm -hmm. So if, if to me right now, Jake Neighbors is the measuring stick for all young players coming in for the Blues. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Matthew Kessel's close. Matthew Kessel works, talks, and acts like an NHLer. I, I was shocked to see how mature he is with his approach to the game. And so those two guys are, are very much leaders already. Zach Dean, sitting down talking to Zach Dean and his outlook on you know his development and what he's trying to accomplish and what he wants to do in the NHL, he's on the right path too. Jimmy Snuggerud, you listen to him talk. In any interview, podcast, and he does... He's saying the things that make him a winning player. Mm -hmm. He's also got the bloodlines. His dad played in the NHL for a long time. Mm -hmm. So the Blues right now, when you talk about winning players, Kerry, we talk mm -hmm. about all the time, 
The Blues' young crop of players are winning players. Dalibor Dvorsky, watching him play, he's an absolute moose mm -hmm. in that league, and he's only 18 years old. Scored again. This kid is tearing it up, but he's playing at both ends of the ice. He's not even close to his man strength yet, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Like, he's barely out of puberty. Let's just be honest <laughs> here, okay? He's another one that talks and acts and plays the game the right way. So when you couple that, the five guys like that, like the future looks really good here. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the Blues are doing a great job of finding the talent, but they're also finding the right character of talent. And that, to me, is the biggest part. That's what's going to accelerate this retool, is having players like that. That is Jamie Rivers, Kerry Davis, Andrew Marsh, I'm Anthony Stalters, Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. We didn't have an opportunity to really dive into last night's game with the Cardinals. Let's get into it. Kyle Gibson pitched well. Offense came alive. Some guys that were struggling had big nights. We'll talk about it all next on 101 ESPN. Selling your home can be a very stressful ordeal. Uh, it's certainly a big deal. It's what, it's the biggest thing you're going to try and do. And if you're not confident in what you're doing, or if you have an agent that just isn't confident or doesn't know the landscape of things, that makes it way worse. That's why you need to call Gloria Lou with your home sold guaranteed realty. Uh, Gloria has been in the business for a long time, and she knows exactly what she's doing. She knows when to put your house on the market, knows exactly how much to charge for your home, the, making sure the sales price is correct. And then the one thing that Gloria Lou does is she gets you to the closing table. And that's all you want. You want to sell your home for the most possible amount of money, maybe multiple offers, driving up that sale price even higher. But then you want to make sure it gets to the closing table. And Gloria Lou is here to do that for you. She's been doing it for several years now. And she is my choice for anything I need in the real estate world. And she needs to be yours, too. And all you have to do is pick up the phone and give her a call. But please tell her that Jamie Rivers sent you over there. She loves hearing that, and she loves 101 ESPN listeners. Her number is 314-325-6888. That, again, is 314-325-6888. Or you can visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com.
301. Your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Kerry Davis and Jamie Rivers. I'm Anthony Stalzer. The Cardinals get it done last night. Big win. Kyle Gibson pitched very well against the Padres. 6-2 winners. Uh, Kyle Gibson, first time through the rotation. Steven Matz also pitched well. But Kyle Gibson was great last night. He did. He, and, no, and he, he was, was fantastic. Carry against a, a loaded lineup. I thought he did a fantastic job. And I, I, I was really proud of the fact that they allowed him to go out there for the seventh inning uh, and, and finish that. Like, don't don't give me the end. Anal- All right, well, here we go. So here we are. You know, last night was an oh, outstanding. Oh, right. It was an outstanding performance Jeez, last night. Kyle Gibson. This is what we have been waiting for. This is what we have been longing for, right? As Cardinal fans, we have been asking for seven innings. Bare minimum, give us that. And he gave it to us, and he gave it to us well. And we hard. want it he did. hard all Give night long. Hard. All night long, and we want more of it. We need more of that. If, you, if this team expects to win, we need those types of performances. And last night, that was the start of it. I expect more tonight, and then the next night, and then the next night, and then here on out. I mean, you know, who's to say we can't win the rest of them, right? Just right? can't get enough, can you? Can't get enough. I need it all, and I got it all last night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well so. said, Kerry. Uh, Carry now, yeah, the, yeah. So no, so sans, sans glasses. I will, I will say this: the the pitching performance was outstanding. I'm not going to lean too much into the hitting performance because of the 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 Waldron was is a knuckleballer. I forget who said uh, the, the when the game was starting. The the announcer said he's he's a. He's, he's got not, a knuckleball. He's got a knuckleball. He's not a knuckleball pitcher. Right. He throws a knuckleball, but he's not a knuckleball pitcher. He threw it a couple times last he night threw when guys it, are waving it, at and it. They, well, yeah. Swap that flies. And then yeah. a few of them got hit really hard. Well, so yeah. I, I won't lean too much into the offensive performance just yet. I need to see it versus some better pitching because we saw it versus some Dodger pitching that was it was it was a struggle. So but the the pitching from us, Kyle Gibson last night, I thought did a fantastic job. And again, if you get that from your starters, you will be a team that will win the division and have a chance to to make a run and push through the playoffs. You need it. You need those performances from your pitching staff. And it, it's funny because Kyle Gibson did not have a great spring training. Mm-mm. He got banged around quite a bit there to the point where like, ooh, boy. And that's, again, less lesson learned to put too much into spring training possibly. But, you know, Gibby reminds me of Wayno in a lot of ways. Like, he does. Obviously, they're very tight, and they're friends, and you know, they're part of Big League Impact. There's a lot of things that connect them. But I'm talking more about that old-school mentality of, like, just give me the ball. Just give me the ball. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to shove. Yeah. Six, seven, eight innings, whatever you need. That's what he looked like to me. He was calm. You know, at no point did it look like he was rattled. At no point did it look like he was in over his head or worried or stressed. Now then, it was just like I felt confident watching him throw the ball that we're all right. Yeah. Which hasn't happened a lot, let's yeah. be honest. You saw it in his last spring training start, right? He had he went, what, five innings, uh, gave up four hits, but struck out nine. Nine, yeah. So you started to see, okay, maybe those first couple of games, getting your feet wet, getting acclimated, you know, maybe you're a veteran, not really into spring training, because I was never into training camp. <laughs> Once I got older, didn't care. Didn't, well, I, I did, but... I was man, like, go bother somebody else. I don't want to be kids. here for two two days, two practices a day. So, yeah, you you he may have started to get, you know, started the feeling of, of the opening day and the season, regular season about to start. And last night was a perfect, was a, was a, I won't say perfect performance, but it was the perfect performance for a Cardinal pitcher based on what we've seen over the last year. Yeah, he talked about it in spring training. There was, you know, one one time the curveball was flat. Another mm-hmm. time he just, he, he, he needed to slow down his, his delivery, and he did. He was working on it, and they asked him after the game, like, yeah, I wasn't worried about it. I really wasn't. I wasn't concerned. He's a pro. Like, everything he said after the game last night reminded me of this. They signed a professional. Mm-hmm. You could talk about how the the rotation was moved. There were certain pieces that moved around. Like Steven Matz was 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 moved a little bit differently because they wanted to get him an extra spring training start. Miles Michaelis, of course, it came with a little fanfare that he was going to be on the bump for the first game because of Sonny Gray being hurt. They wanted to match up Lance Lynn to have the home opener. Kyle Gibson was none of that. You know, Zach Thompson was elevated to the, the, the second. He pitched second. There was none of that for Gibson. It was no. like... And then there's Kyle Gibson. Yeah. And he was the one that shoved. And they asked me if, you know, they're kind of almost leading him to talk about how there was no fanfare to his spot in the rotation. He goes, yeah, 
I'm too old to worry about that stuff. I'm to the point now in my career. They give me the ball. They tell me when to pitch. I'm going to go pitch. I love that. Right. They've signed a professional. That's a nice, it's a good lesson, too, for some of the young guys Certainly. worried about all this other crap. Absolutely. And we'll talk to Kyle Gibson at 5 o'clock. I also know, speaking of the offense, or transitioning to the offense, I know that some people, and I, I, Kerry and Marsh, I think you guys will both feel this way, correct me if I'm wrong, Victor Scott should be leading off. I, you, you guys have talked about, I wish that Victor Scott would be the leadoff hitter. Maybe it was just I, I, I won't. I won't. I don't want After uh, last night, I mean, as long as Brendan Donovan can hit and get on. But there is a, so he almost did get thrown out on the ball that got away from Capisano, right? Yeah. He, he, he sh probably could have gotten thrown out. That's the part where I do want a little bit more speed because sure. I don't want a guy that's station to station. Now, he was able to score a couple of runs and, and had a couple of hits, did a really good job last night. But if Victor Scott can get on base, which, you know, I, however you can get on, yeah. he's, he's, a, he's a troublemaker for the opposing pitchers and the opposing catchers once he gets on base. So mm -hmm. if you have that guy able to get on and able to create havoc on the base pass with Goldie, with Nolan Gorman, Arenado uh, coming up behind him, yes, I would love to have that. I like the fact that the Cardinals just have some speed in the lineup, period. Thank you. Like Victor Scott, no matter where you place uh, him. Matt Carpenter laid that bun down. He was flying. But how about Carp? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shoot, it only took you four Why? years to figure what? it out. Well, I, I was screaming at, like, when he used to buy this, it's 1,400 people over there. Over There's right. no one on the left. He could get just, a double by could, bunting it. Put it over there. But he did. He did yesterday. But action, my point. Action Jackson at the Bloom Party said in the office, he goes, if he would have done that four years yeah. ago, he'd still be a Cardinal. There you go. That and 300, probably. No, sorry, he is a Cardinal. He would have he remained oh, a Cardinal. Wow. Yeah, Anthony. No, but my point going back to the speed is that you've got three legitimate guys, and even Walker's, not even, he's a very fast individual, right. too. Donovan is a leadoff now as the game progresses and you move on and then sometimes within the batting order you end up with Scott, Wynn, and Donovan, one, two, three, or two, three, four uh, mm -hmm. for that inning. Like Mason Wynn, he's a nightmare. He yes, stole a base. He did. While Brendan Donovan's at bat. And mm -hmm. the reason that's relevant, Anthony, and we talk about it all the time, Brendan Donovan is the most annoying guy to pitch against because he fouls off. He finds a pitch. He fouls off. Mm -hmm. it, you're nine, ten pitches in, and the pitcher's like, this guy's not going away. <laughs> yeah. That's the perfect time for Mason Wynn to catch a pitcher that's frustrated right. a little bit, focused, like uber focused on the at-bat, and then whoosh, he's off the second base. A Brendan Donovan at-bat doesn't start until he's got two strikes. <laughs> <Yes>. I, <laughs> I, and, and you're right, Jamie, and we do talk about a lot. The pitching, if you're an opposing pitcher, you do not want to, that's the worst guy you want to face outside of one. Especially with a guy on behind on. you, too. Yes. Now and, you're in the stretch. And, and you're Mason, like, Mason Wynn was halfway to second base. That oh, was yeah. his leadoff. And, he was, and his Brito lead was like 30 feet off the bag. Yeah. I'm like, how's a pitcher not just throwing it over there. Really nice night for the offense. Of course, Nolan Arnauto. It was good to see Nolan Arnauto last night got into the action as well. His swing looked better last night. There there at least was a lot more extension to it. Jamie, you talked about like that bent, that bent elbow. He always has had that bent elbow, and I know that as a younger guy, you can you can power through a lot of those things when you don't have a perfect swing. Mm -hmm. But as an older guy, some of that technique comes into play and, yeah. and it just looks like he's been like fighting it a little bit i also thought one of the in internet bat that if you'd flipped over to watch more of your more of the blues it was it was late in the game but i thought nolan gorman had his best swing of the year too nolan gorman looked looks like he was trying to hit a home run on every pitch mm -hmm. front hip flying out head flying out trying to smoke everything he he looked like he had decent timing despite all the strikeouts walker looked completely overwhelmed so it was nice to see walker also have a couple of big uh, right. couple of nice hits last night but the last at bat that gorman had had he let the ball get in deep let it let it travel deep and he had a short swing to it and he just poked it over the shortstop that is that is a swing that i hope that gorman takes more of that walker takes more of the power will come paul goldschmidt is a perfect example of this Shorter swing, short two, long through. When he when he gets a good pitch to hit and he can, he can extend on it, the ball usually winds up beyond the wall. Right. If not, he'll take he'll take the base hit up the middle or he'll take the double into the gap. Gorman and Walker can can learn a lot from some somebody like Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt's not out there trying to hit home runs, and he will, he'll still hit twenty five to thirty, right. just because of the swing. 
think up the middle, think double, wind up with 30 some odd home runs if you have that power. But otherwise, just take good pit, good good swings. And I thought Gorman simplified things in his last at bat last night after looking really ugly in LA and for most of the game yesterday. Yeah, I mean he he has he was looking ugly. It wasn't it wasn't good and you're going to expect that you're you're going to expect the strikeouts, but the power is what we expect from him as well. It will come. And and if he's not hitting the ball out of the field, I, I mean out of the park, you're going to. I don't know. I, I think Danny Mack and, and and Randy were talking about. Do you do you think about moving him down in the lineup? I think they were talking about that earlier today. It, mm. It's probably still too early in the season for that, but you got to get production out of that two hole spot. You have to if he's going to be there and going to be there. I mean, a three hole spot. If he's going to be yeah. there, you have to get that get that production from him because sure. you got Goldie coming up behind him. You want to make sure he's either on base or has already cleared the bases and and yeah. you know having some some run scored. We had this issue with Tyler O'Neill too. Tyler O'Neill got elevated in the lineup and he had him in the two hole, three hole because that's quite honestly that's where he projected to be a perfect mm. spot. And Nolan Gorman, last year he started out six, you know, usually somewhere in the six hole because yeah. I can go over the lineup game from last year. I still got one of those notepads. Yeah. He was in and around <laughs> that six, seven, depending. Then he got elevated a little bit. And this year he's just been given right. that yeah. three spot. And he's struggling, man. Theor he is. Theoretically, it's a good spot for him because be he's between Goldschmidt and Arnato. Theoretically, and if, yeah, yeah, 100%. And if, and, and if you're a Would you swap them, though? No. Like, I, but would you take Walker and Gorman and swap them for a couple of games just to see? Walker and Gorman? Yeah, in the lineup. No. Are you are you one of the people that, that really believe in the left-right, left-right combination? No. I, because I don't either. I don't think it matters. I think if you are— I think it matters what, later the game goes. Like I, as you get deeper into the end, well, when they're bringing in relievers. Depending, yeah, if it, if you, yeah, yeah, like who's yeah, available you gotta in the have bullpen. Three, yes. Okay, maybe, but to if, start if a game, my no. second, third, and fourth hitter are all right-handed, I don't. <laughs> those are my second, third, and fourth hitters. I don't give a damn who you bring in. Right. I'm okay. I, I'm not gonna take them out because you brought in a righty mm -hmm. and say, "Oh, now nah, I'm worried." No, I'm, <laughs> let's go. So I, I, I don't know that that matters, but it. If Jordan Walker can find his stroke, he's swinging and missing at a lot of sliders away still, which is. I, don't, I guess. Yes, that's final at bat was that. Guess what? Yeah. That's all they're going to throw. That's Absolutely. all they're, they're going to keep throwing it to him. Uh -huh. So that's what I was going to say when you asked about the, the righty lefty. I, I always think about it from the opposing pitcher standpoint. So if if Gorman is hitting third and I'm looking at my lineup, I got to get I got to worry about Goldie. I got to worry about Arnado when he's swinging well. Mm -hmm. Like those are the two guys that can really hurt me. So I need to attack Gorman. Right. I need to get him out. So again, theoretically. Gorman in that spot should be should be perfect mm -hmm. because Gorman's somebody that can hit a mistake. But Chris Duncan, one of my favorite lines that that dunk used to always say is, "You can't put a good swing on a bad pitch." Yeah. And Gorman has been trying to put a good swing on bad pitches all season. Well, he's long starting to feel it too. And he's yeah. He's feeling the but, pressure. But last night again, I thought he, it was the short, compact swing. Let the ball get in deep. Went the other way. Perfect. I hope we see more of that moving forward. It's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stoltz. We've got an early six-pack. Text us, Air, Air Comfort Service tax line, 314-399-9646. It's the Air Comfort Service tax line. If you have a question for us, Sports Six Pack is next. Elevate your vehicle's performance by heading over to Pure Performance, your one-stop shop for all aftermarket modifications. Uh, they have accessories for every single vehicle out there. Whether it's a Jeep, a Bronco, pickup truck, SUV, even minivans, they have all the best accessories 
right there for you in their show showroom by the way the showroom is 25,000 square feet it's located right in st peter's right off of highway 70 it's really easy to get to and when you walk in you're going to be blown away with how many amazing things they have for your vehicle when you get there please ask for shelby and tell her Jamie River sent you in. Shelby's going to take great care of you. And don't worry about you know, regular tires. It's not all oversized off-road things over at Pure Performance. No, they have all different kinds of tires and wheels for everyday vehicles. Their shop is a full-service shop as well. So anything else you need while you're in there getting your accessories put on, the shop guys, the technicians, they will take care of everything for you. And then let's get to the vehicle. You are going to love it. No matter what vehicle you have, the accessories that you pick, the technicians do such a great job. Just love it. Every single time I'm over there visiting, I see something new that they've done, and I just can't believe how awesome they are at their job. So, again, stop by and check out all the accessories in person, or you can find them all on their website. Visit them at pureperformance.com. That's pure, P-U-R, performance.com. It's time for the Fast Lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me! The Sports Six Pack is now. All right, time for the Sports Six Pack here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN with Super Bowl champion Kerry Davis, former Blues defenseman Jamie Rivers, and Anthony Stalters, Andrew Marsh with your questions for the sports six pack question number one all right i subscribe to whatever this text message says from the 314 would it make more sense to swap win and scott in the lineup if we're going to bunt each of them by the way i'm totally fine with that approach and i like how we play small ball more why not give win the better opportunity to see more pitches win gets on and scott bunts and scott has a better chance to get on with a bunt too yeah i'm fine with it i, I guess i'm not I, either camp I'm not like really passionate about about it so I, I'm good I'm good with that approach I understand the breakdown Marsh you kind of seem to like that idea too yeah I saw the other day they they bunted Mason Wynn bunted Victor Scott over mm -hmm. 
even though he could have probably just stolen the base. <laughs> right. Instead of Mason Wynn, who has a better batting average and gets mm-hmm. on base more, have him get on it in the eighth spot, and then Victor Scott can bunt him over. Yeah. And like the texter said, not that Mason Wynn couldn't beat out a bunt, mm-hmm. but Victor Scott absolutely can. If they're committed to running, and so far... I think they are. If I they're hope, committed I to running, they, I hope so. I would. I would actually prefer it if they staggered Scott and yeah. Win. Mm. So have Scott. Yeah, but then who are you plopping in the middle that becomes the anvil? The because then what happens if you get Scott that gets on? He steals second. Then let's say it's Burleson. He gets a single. Yeah. Now you got Burley in the middle of Mason Wynn and Victor Scott. Gonna run, like you're going right by him. People. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people won't like this idea, but for now, what about Walker? Putting him at eight. Yep. Yeah. I, why would they not like it? Who cares? No, fans might not like well, it. Well, he hasn't hit the ball, so yeah. what do I care? What's okay. the fans think? Well, besides Jamie, other fans <laughs> might not like it. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. I mean, he's not knocking the snot out of it. Right, I, just, I, completely, I completely agree, which, about, is, which is why maybe you do it now and stagger those guys and then run. I mean, when Wynn gets on, run. When Scott run, gets on, run. 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 Pressure, yes. pressure, pressure. What about, uh, and people might not like this either, but Matt Carpenter <laughs> or Alec Burleson, Teams tend to shift on those guys. If you have a speedy guy oh, on first base, you can't shift. Right. Well, they, they you wouldn't they, be able to. You can't, but on. you can. No, like, I'm saying no, no, no. I know what you're saying. I'm saying you wouldn't be able. Oh, to, yeah, that's what, to I'm, have that's what the, I'm trying you to get be to. Able to because right. that's what I'm trying to get at. Well, There's yeah, got to be a third by the time exactly. You, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. don't have anybody at third. It, it, yeah, just you, keep running. You tell Clap at that point. Yeah. Hey, kid, you see what they're doing? Yeah, you're on third if it, when Correct. Carpenter lays this down. I also think Matt Carpenter he has to be in the lineup every day now. Wow, he he didn't have a ball lead the infield, Anthony. Didn't need to, Kerry. He got hey, two hits. Called you small ball, baby. Yeah. You, know, you know the <laughs> other thing. He was uh, okay. You know, you know the only letter in the alphabet I truly care about the W. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. They and win last wow. night, Jamie. And they won huh? the last did time. They win last night. Did they win? They Saturday? won in LA. Yeah. Yeah, you're darn right. They did. Uh. You got to play every day now. You're right. I'm with you. <laughs> Andy, every day. You made I'm, a great I'm big on trends. They're two and zero with Matt he'll Carpenter be, in the he'll lineup. Be in the lineup tonight. Anthony, you should, should be the be. manager. He, he, might need, he might need a day mm-hmm. off. Though. Wouldn't you appreciate it? Ranthony would come out a lot. Oh, oh man, that'd be great. Fans would be fans would be all about that. Well, maybe fl- not I'd the manager. The- maybe you'd be the guy that actually makes the lineup. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, we got a we got a text message from uh, one of our regulars yesterday that was um, very. Uh, how should I put this? It's kind of arrogant about our lack of knowledge about who actually is calling the shots mm. for the oh, Cardinals. Yeah. 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 Hmm. It's Bill DeWitt with a walkie-talkie. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> the Fisher Price ones too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he's not gonna he's not gonna spring for the good ones. No. Why, why would he? It's not in the budget. It works the same. The Fisher Price ones work the same. They work yep. just the same. Mm-hmm. Anthony, we need the bunt. We need him to bunt, <laughs> <Yeah>. please. <laughs> Put on the hit and run. <laughs> He turned it off and put it down. Oh, yeah. I saw you turn it off. (laughs) That's why I got you another one. (laughs) We must have been on the wrong channel. I wasn't hearing you. I was hearing Bob driving down the road. Descalso walks over with another one. Yeah, Uh, here you go. Danny's got one for you. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. Question number two. All right, from the 636, between trades, free agents leaving, and potential contract buyouts, how much turnover do you see the Blues horizon this offseason? Mm. See on the Blues horizon. That's tough, man. I think about, uh, I, I would say three to four guys that are. Well, who's definitely gone? I, I mean, I, so the, the question was who's gone or who's staying? No, how much, how much, how much turnover? turnover? Oh, there'll be, there'll be a substantial. Yeah. There has to be. From yeah. this, this year's team? Yeah. Well, you've got at least three or four. You're unrestricted. So Verona's already down in Springfield. Oh, we don't count him. He's but not he's just, he's still on okay. the list, you know? So Verona will be gone. Kapanen, I think they'll move on mm-hmm. from Kasperi Kapanen. Uh, I think they'll move on from Marco Scandella. Mm-hmm. Sammy Blay. Uh, Sammy Blay, they'll move on from Sammy Blay. So that's four guys right Any there. Any other defensemen? No, that's that's where it gets tricky. Because the, the, the clauses. Or because of the no, no trade, trade clause. clause. Jamie, who'd you say? I got Kapanen, Blay, Scandella. Who's the other one? Verona. Over oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, he's just, they're still paying him, uh, what, 1.5 or something I, like that. I honestly forgot about you forgot he was on the Jakub. Team. Yeah. Yeah, but... So those four right there, three in the NHL, that'll be three guys immediately. And then you whittle your way down from there. Like, who else doesn't make sense? Walker signed to an extension, so he'll be around, which is fine. I like Nathan Walker. Mm-hmm. I think he's a 
a hardworking player. He fills whatever role you need him to, to fill. Uh, Oscar Sunquist, he'll be out for a bit. So right. you'll have somebody in for him because who knows when Sonny will be back. So that's another guy that you're replacing yet not replacing because you'll need a body in that spot. Uh, and then on the defensive core, uh, that whole situation, I mean, Army's going to have to talk to some of these guys. And if he chooses that the right decision is to move on from one of these guys, then he's going to have to sit down and talk about maybe potential trade destinations. Yeah. Um, you know, after Tory Krug did not waive his no trade clause to go to Philly, Army might want to sit down preemptively and talk to whoever it is that he's thinking about trading and just saying, hey, listen, we want to get a deal done, but I respect your no trade clause. But however, uh, I just want you to know that like the team is moving in a different direction. Do you have a list of teams that you would go to? Right. As player gives you three, four, five teams, you call those teams and you try to make a deal. That, again, is only if Army wants to change things up a little right. bit. Makes sense. Hey, let's continue our sports six-pack. What? Well, Marsh. I mean, we only got, we, we only got two questions. We can't, get, we can't, we can't take two <laughs> They're really good, though. and leave four in the holder. I mean, mm. come on. So we'll continue our sports six-pack next on 101 ESPN. Are you looking to purchase a brand new vehicle or even a pre-owned vehicle? Londoff Chevrolet is the place to go. They are the best in the business. I have been a customer at Londoff Chevrolet for over 25 years now. And recently... My boys both bought vehicles from Londoff Chevrolet. One of them bought a pre-owned vehicle that was fantastic, still had warranty left on it, just an amazing vehicle. And then the other one, he bought one of those new Chevy tracks. Awesome little SUV, uh, perfect for what he needed to do. And the process was awesome. The sales representative was so helpful. They informed him on everything, walked him through just basically top to bottom, bumper to bumper, explained the vehicle. It was great. And the reason that's important is because now my boys will be Londoff customers for life. And that's what Johnny Londoff and the, and the crew want over there. They want you to become part of the Londoff family. Tell your friends, tell neighbors, to whoever, whoever it is, about the great experiences you have over at Londoff Chevrolet. So please visit one of their two locations. They've got the original in Florissant, Missouri, or the brand new Autoplex located out in St. Peter's, both Places have great inventory of brand new and pre-owned vehicles. Walk in, tell them that Jamie Rivers sent you in. They love hearing that. They love hearing that the 101 ESPN listeners are over there with the Londoff Chevrolet team. But if you can't get there in person, at least get there online. They got two great websites. Go to Londoff.com or LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Johnny Landoff Chevrolet.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Cardinals defeat the San Diego Padres last night by a final score of 6 to 2. They'll take on the Padres in game number two of the series later today. 8:40 first pitch. Miles Michaelis on the mound going up against you, Darvish. Kyle Gibson with a stellar performance last night. We'll have him on the show at 5 o'clock, so stay tuned for that. The Blues also picked up a victory in overtime last night against the Edmonton Oilers. 3-2 Brandon Saad, the hero in overtime. The Blues will take on the Nashville Predators Thursday with the pregame starting at 6 o'clock. Puck drop is at 7, and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. It was also announced today that Jimmy Snuggerud will return to the University of Minnesota for his junior season. We talked a little bit about that earlier in the show. If you missed that, or if you missed one of your sports six-pack questions, go to 101ESPN.com or check out the free 101 mobile app. Go to the podcast page. You'll find all of our interviews and full shows there, and it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Center. Speaking of the six-pack, we have part two of the sports six-pack coming up next, so get your questions in to the Air Comfort Service text line, 314-399-9646. Sports six-pack part two coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling. Independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Time for the fast lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me. The sports six pack is now. Let's continue our sports six pack here in the fast lane on 101 ESPN. Andrew Marsh, question three, please. Question number three. All right, from the 618, what's more competitive, the CHL or NCAA? Well, they're obviously two different leagues. Um, so the NCAA has older players for the most part. I mean, uh, freshman in college is what, 17, 18, mm-hmm. Carrie? 18, 19. Like a true yeah. freshman. Yeah. And, you know, you've got your 18 year olds in the CHL, that's towards the, the back half of their uh, their career in junior hockey so if you're 17 18 you're 22 before you're leaving college you you age out at 20 you can have an overage it's turning 21 Mm -hmm. in junior hockey but so it's just different in a lot of ways the rules are different there's fighting allowed in the chl Uh, you know, where guys can Pete Carey's interest. get after it in college. There has been fights, but mm. there really aren't any fights per se. The college game has some guys that are physically more mature. You know, like here's the thing is the NCAA in the last handful of years has gotten older. Players will play their U18 AAA season. Mm-hmm. Then they'll go play two or three years of junior hockey in the States and then go play college. So sometimes they're 22 before they're freshmen playing college hockey, which but then you do the math, you're 26 leaving. Right. So you can have players like Jimmy Snuggru playing against 24, 25, 26 year old players. It's not common to have a 26 year old but it is pretty common to have 23 24 mm-hmm. year olds now yeah usually those players are undrafted yeah and if you're drafted you're usually going to be a true freshman heading into college and for the most part you're either leaving after your first second or third year typically you don't make it to that fourth year unless you're jimmy vc of course and you don't want to sign with your team yeah <laughs> and then you wait it out and pick your pony at that point yeah <laughs> but um as far as like what league is better, they're just different in different ways. You have older kids in one league. Um, the other league is more NHL-esque with the rules the way they are. Um, both are good tools for young players. If you got a player that projects to be an NHL player, it doesn't matter if they're in one league or the other, they're going to make the NHL. Question number four. From the 636, what are your guys' go-to fast food restaurant? Mm. So, uh, is Five Guys considered fast food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign me up. I could probably do that every day of the week. I shouldn't, and I won't, but I could. Yeah, Raising Canes. Yeah, yeah. Canes. Got that Caniac combo with the sauce and everything. Absolutely. I like the box combo. Box combo. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? (laughs) Um, 
You know, but Raising Cane's a good one for sure. Yeah, Raising Cane's is tough, tough to beat. Very good fries. Mm. Five yes, guys also awesome as well. Crinkle cut fries. Mm. Mm. They got that sauce. They get, I just yeah. dip the cardboard oh, in. Oh, yeah. It doesn't, yeah. Matter. It's all, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's it doesn't matter. Uh, so Anthony put his finger in it one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Started eating his finger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of weird, but. Fortunately, Jamie was there to stop me. Yeah. I appreciate that, Jamie. He's almost down to the bone. Yeah. Yeah. I almost lost my finger there. Chipotle. Yeah, yeah, Chipotle yeah, as well. All the time. Mm-hmm. Hardee's for me. Hardee's. Hard oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, what, for whatever reason, and it's just a mental thing, I guess, but I, on the road, like if I'm doing a road trip, Wendy's. Mm. I don't know why. I could see that. I just love Wendy's on the road. Yeah. You getting that biggie bag? What is in a biggie bag? Yeah. What are you, what are you stuffing in that big bag? I don't know. I, all I know is it's the official oh. burger of March Madness. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Culver's yeah. is it's another one somewhere right. on our station. Culver's? Yeah. Culver's. Culver's. Culver's is yummy. You, you Culver's gotta, is really good. It's oh, gonna yeah. be, you're going to wait oh, yeah. when you go through the line because they're going to make it fresh and you're going to enjoy that. I like, too, how they, they bring in, they hire, like, uh, high schoolers with, you know, like, strong GPAs and stuff mm. like that. Give them, a, give them their first opportunity. That's good. Like, jobs and stuff. That's cool. Mm. Something different, yeah. As opposed to the person behind the desk that doesn't want to be there and lets them <laughs> lets you know about it <laughs> and screws up your order. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Uh, where are you guys at on the Chick Fil A? I do Chick-fil-A like Chick Fil A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pricey. I like their service. So I like the service. I like the the service. food itself is like it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have me wowed. No, I'm with you on that. I like their sauce. Yeah. Um, but if you had a choice sauce, between Cane's or Cane's. Chick-fil-A. See? Oh, yeah. like, that's where I go, too. Yeah. So you know just, what? Don't sleep on Church's chicken. I've been eating that quite frequently a lot. I don't know if I've had mm. Church's oh, It's not, it's not bad at all. I've had really, it. Yeah. I'm more of a Popeye's. If I Popeye's go, is yeah, good, Popeye too. The, oh, yeah. Mm. Biscuit. Yeah. Okay. You get you yeah. some Cajun sparkle. Oh, yeah. Cajun oh. sparkle. When you go to Popeye's, wow. ask for Cajun sparkle. Do you get, do you get that in like the oh. back alley or something? Nah, like that? Yeah, yeah, they just like put it on the menu. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you got to ask for it. They're not going <laughs> to give it to you. So it's like when you Cajun go into sparkle. in and out burger and you order animal style. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's right. Cajun sparkle. You All put right. that on there, you it'd be good. Be careful. Not too much Cajun sparkle. Get as much as you want. Two things here. One, I really appreciate a fast food restaurant that is open past midnight. Night. Oh, yeah. Uh, and from the 314, the biggie bag, you can pick a double cheeseburger or a chicken sandwich. Then you can get four chicken tenders and Ooh. french fries and a drink. That, that sounds, sounds like a nice. Can you, swap, can you swap that drink out for a frosty? <laughs> oh. Because if you can. I'm sure you can. It, 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 it I'll charge you. I'll charge It's worth it. It's probably worth it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what time of night is it? <laughs> you know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. Then I'll yeah. take it, yes. It's Wendy's time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's biggie bag time. <laughs> it's biggie bag time. What's in it? I don't care. I don't care. Just put it in the bag. Put it in that big-ass bag. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, question Sir, number five. Drink. Put it in the bag. No, we can't do that, Sarah. Oh, Let's do okay. it. <laughs> take it out. It's frosty. Uber driver's panicking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the 618, best city to visit as a visiting player. Oh, man. There's a lot of them. <laughs> What what are you trying to do? No, is it, are you are you, you trying to? Is, <laughs> because uh, do, do you guys have a, a lot of time? Like for even I was you gonna have, ask you, you that you for can, you, Carrie, but you can. I mean, Jamie, you have the same thing. We get in. Their schedule is worse. Ours like, is a we'll little spend tighter. A couple yeah. of days in the yeah. city. Like, we got yeah. one day. So it depends on what time you get in and what what establishments are open yeah. in that time frame and, and how close you are to said establishments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how um, much work you want to put into getting there. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Tampa, yeah. Miami. Oh. Atlanta. Ebor City, huh? Ebor City. <laughs> Ooh, never heard of it. <laughs> never been. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> how far? So Ebor City Make from like Sunrise. You? Oh, from Sunrise. Yeah, it's it's from St. Petersburg, Ebor City, like from Tampa, that area. It's yeah. not yeah. that far. But from Sunrise, you're looking at, like oh, yeah, Sunrise is over near Fort right? Lauderdale. So, yeah. Okay, so you're talking about like when when you visit the Lightning. Yes. Yeah. yeah correct. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Ebor City is a it's a Great, great estate. Yeah. Great, great setup. It's Quiet just, area. You know, beautiful peaceful. scenery. Mm-hmm. You know, great scenery. Mm-hmm. Great, mm-hmm. great scenery. If you're a Some veteran, is that usually a place that you want to settle down? Either St. Louis or Ebor City? Yes. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. gotcha. I highly advise it. Either way. But you know, there's a lot of great cities. Like, I love New York City. We were just there for an extended period of time. I loved it. I love LA uh, when we go out there. Dallas is an awesome mm-hmm. city. Uh, Vancouver is awesome. Montreal is great. Like, 
there's so many great cities that we get a chance to visit and <laughs> each city has their own things like their own restaurants or their own establishments or a bar that you like you yeah. know it's 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 fun do you all but you all are, can be there for a couple of days we so can be yeah. we're usually there Saturday you guys are night out. and leave as soon as the game is over on Sunday. And sometimes you may be a little bit further from the city. You might be 30, 40 minutes from the city mm -hmm. or the city you want to be in to, to actually partake in some of those yeah. activities. And when you're young, that's nothing. You got a car waiting. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then like five years into the league, you're like, yeah, room service sounds yeah. good. <laughs> I'm not making that 35 minute trek. I'm no. gonna I'm gonna hotel room and chill. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question number six. From the 618, which team made the biggest step forward in NFL free agency? Oh, you're Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, you got two quarterbacks, and they didn't have really any last year, so it's gotta be the Pittsburgh Steelers, correct? Yep, good job, good answer. All right. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Coming up next. Oh my. Yeah. We need we need yellow glasses in oh, here. Yeah. Black and yellow glasses. <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Carrie wear them every no, day. No, we should just get Carrie a terrible towel and he'll just wave it while he speaks there nonsense yeah. about the Steelers. No kidding. Get yeah, a shoulder was... burn. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> be bad. Uh, it's not going to matter cuz, you know, they're the Jets, but I th I think the Jets have had a really nice offseason. They signed Mike Williams, they signed They get rid of Zach Wilson. Not yet. He's, not, he's still there. Yeah. Hmm. Nobody will take him. They're going to make him sign Mike Williams. Yeah. They They're going to make that, him that, quit, that, aren't they? I don't, so, yeah. <laughs> he'll be there for what, four weeks? That's yeah. correct. Be Tyron Smith, same thing. Eight, about eight games <sighs> or so. They just traded for Hassan Reddick, who had like 40 some odd oh, yeah, sacks the last two years. So, is I, their I think quarterback they, healthy? Or is he going to be on the campaign trail? No, they he, he didn't get picked up on no. the campaign trail, so he's going to be he's going to be he's going to be he's gonna playing football. Yeah, but again, it's the Jets, so it won't matter. Mm. What about but, the what about the Eagles? I like what the With Eagles Saquon have done. Barkley I like I like that call. C.J. Gardner Johnson back. Yep, Devin White. And they already to had a team that it was already solid. You know, you got two solid lines. Can you pick it? You know, like the tight the Titans don't. I, I realize the Titans are getting a lot of love because of the moves they made. But when you really think about it, what did the, what did they add? They added to the outside. Mm -hmm. They are, they got a, a porous offensive line. Their defensive line is not great outside of. Simmons. They got Daniel Hunter. They did sign oh, they did Hunter. sign Hunter. Yeah. Excuse me. They thank you. They signed Hunter. But outside of that, that was they yeah. had they, had, they, Joe they gave Mixon. they gave Cal. Yeah. You're not a fan of Joe Mixon. I, I was I love, two years ago. I love. He, I don't think he got the ball enough. I, mean, I don't he's imagine assistant. that. Uh, yeah, uh, always. That's always my answer. 7 11. <laughs> long as you know. They're I'll always, give always the running open. back the damn ball. Yep. Run the damn ball. But you can't run him up the middle. <laughs> you can't run him up the middle. There's no physicality to his game. So yeah. the Titans, I think the Titans are going to be a little overhyped heading it. I just got a feeling. Overhyped? Yeah. Oh, they got Calvin Ridley. Okay. Is Will Levis good? Yeah, who's going to throw him the football? You, you know, you gave up. Derrick Henry got nothing back for him. I don't know who's running the ball. Well, well, Drew Taj Mixon, you said, right? No, no, no. That's the Texans. I'm sorry. I said Titans. I, I was I, talking about the Texans. I was talking about the Titans. No, I was talking about the Texans like, the whole Joe time. Mixon didn't go yeah. to Tennessee. Texans. No, I thought you said Texans. Mm. No, Texans. I like the Texans. Yeah. I, the Texans. Yeah. I didn't really. Ah, <laughs> oh. uh, remember the Texans. What a good movie. <laughs> oh. It's so funny. Daniel Hunter, yeah, Texans. I was about to say, like, they didn't get to Daniel yeah. Hunter. I that's thought you said Texans. No, I said Titans. I didn't hear you. In my head, I go, I don't think that's right, but Kerry knows his stuff. I'm like, they didn't get to Daniel Hunter. I was talking to the Texans the entire time. I'm like, what are you talking about? Thank you. No, the Titans. They got C.J. Stroud. What was he talking it? about? Yeah. No. He's confused. All right. I, I can't. <laughs> Yeah, who's going to throw him the ball? It's C.J. Stroud. Who? Oh, when you so said, when you said Calvin Tennessee. Ridley, I'm like, Calvin Ridley didn't go to the Texans? <laughs> We're being nice to each other, too. We're, like, not correcting each other. Who's on first? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Back into your Cardinals. So far, so good for the most signings. We had a text earlier that said, hey, you guys should be apologizing to Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson. You know, Marsh, you had said earlier, too, that I should apologize to that text. Yeah, you should. I'm going to do that next mm. when we talk about most Can't signings wait. here on 101 ESPN. Hey, with spring just a few weeks away, and actually, we're already kind of in spring, so... 
Look at the temperatures outside. Look at look at the rising temps. You get the rain coming in. Is your roof leaky? Is it old? Is it damaged? Is it ugly? How about those big storms that we had last night? Happy Roof Company needs to be your first call if you've got a damaged roof or if you need a new roof. Because if you call today, they will have someone to look at your issue within 24 hours. That's how Happy Roof Company operates. And I, one thing I love about Happy Roof Company is that, you know, we just get the storm coming in. You got storm chasers that come in from... You know, different cities, out of town, sometimes even different states. And they say, hey, we'll, we'll work on your roof. They're not reliable. They're not trustworthy. Their warranty's no good. Happy Roof Company, they don't chase storms. 100% of their market is right here in St. Louis and the surrounding areas. Their headquarters are in Sunset Hills out in South County. They work with St. Louisers. They've been around for a very long time. They've got an A-plus rating with the BBB, excellent, excellent field supervisors. They do residential and commercial roofing, roofing superior high-end high end products, and a 10-year labor warranty on all shingle roofs. So don't go with the out-of-town company that swoops in and says, hey, I'm working on your neighbor's house, too. Want us to throw a roof on for you? Next thing you know, they're delivering products on top of your neighbor's roof instead of yours. And trust me, on that one. That, that was a story that I heard recently. Go with a trusted roof company, Happy Roof Company. Give them a call. Tell them Salter sent you. 314-665-3001. 314-665-3001. Or visit thehappyroof.com. It's a Happy Roof Company.
need a new gauntlet contestant, so text into the Air Comfort Service text line the word gauntlet, 314-399-9646. You'll have an opportunity to take out Marsh, Kerry, Jamie, or me. Now, we got a, a very passionate text earlier that was uh, saying that we should apologize to the pitching staff mm-hmm. for the Cardinals after we complained all, all offseason. Um, and then, you know, we lead off the show with the Blues. Just, uh, I don't know what you guys are thinking. I'm leading off with the blues. Um, but, anyways, the texture did respond <laughs> after Ranthony came out for a second. Yeah, we got a text from 314. LOL, I don't need an apology. I'm a big boy. But Lynn and Gibson deserve better than most of the city gave them. They've been treated like horrible ads. And the cards are going to suck because they're here. They both deserve better. In fairness to us, we said that the Cardinals will suffer mostly because of the front office's decisions. We didn't specifically say Lynn or a friend of the show, Kyle Gibson, will join us at 5 o'clock. Yes. And that's in fairness to us. But you know what, Texter? I'm not even going to do the fast lane apology. I love your passion, your spirit, and your honesty. We need more Texters like you. What? Do I'm we? trying to be serious. I'm trying to speak from the heart. One, don't speak for anybody. Just yourself, please. Okay, Jamie, when I said I'm trying to speak from the heart, I didn't mean your heart. Yeah. I meant my heart. Leave my heart alone. Okay. Yeah, leave his heart alone. Yeah. Please. Yeah, I can't yeah, take yeah, much yeah, more. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> and we can't ask for the guy's spleen. He doesn't no, have no, it. Don't have that. Yeah. We don't have the tools to do uh, the operation. Yeah. So. No, but we could try. Nah, I'm okay. So we're I mean, re- I'll try. I would try, but <laughs> 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 you wouldn't have the success you had last time. <laughs> Was it really, though? <laughs> they didn't really help me out either. They just threw him on a cold... Yeah. Metal table and threw him in the corner. With my guts wide open. Oh. Yep. Hey, oh, oh, he's fine. alive. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Maybe the staple gun. We'll just staple this guy back. And think we don't have malpractice over here. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Well, you can't. I mean, can you can you sue them? It was a vet veterinarian, I think. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Anyways. Weird that I uh, you know, greet people now by sniffing their rear end. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Yeah. Yeah, well, you did that anyway. You probably did yeah. that before. Yeah, I did it, but I do it more often. Sure. <laughs> what? So, yeah. f- you know, so far, Marcy. so good for the, uh, <laughs> for most. You were there. <laughs> Tom, you were there. Uh, so far, so good for most signings, boys. You all on board now? I was excited. I mean, no, hold on. Let me think. <laughs> he does this every time. He looks at me like I'm crazy. I almost hurt my left there. He turned his head so bad. Whoa, what the hell are you talking about? I was excited about last night's performance. Yes. It was a great performance by Kyle Gibson, and, and it's what we needed. It's what you what we need for this team to have success, and I thought he did a great job. Seven innings pitch, um, going out there for the seventh inning, fe- facing the lineup the third time around, which we know has not been the practice, the, the, the normal practice here, so I thought he did a great job. Kudos to the to the staff, to Ali, for allowing him to get to seven innings and finishing off what he started in. And if we can get more of those, more quality starts, more opportunities, I think this team will be really good. And I think that was the strategy overall by the Cardinals front office, that to be determined if it will actually pay off the way they want it to. But last night was an example of why they signed Kyle Gibson. That's what they had visions of, is Kyle Gibson doing that. Why would they? Because he did it the year before. Mm -hmm. He had a great year in Baltimore. Pitched very, very well. So that's the plan. Now, does the plan stay on track? I I don't know. Because Miles Michaelis right now, for me, is the wild card. Because we really thought he would regain form and, and be that guy, that innings eater, solid guy. I realize it's just one game. I understand that, but I've got the last game he played in all of last year that I'm using right now as my database, and tonight is a huge start. For me, tonight is a huge start for Miles Michaelis. One, he has to get past five innings. He has to, some way, somehow. And and then from there, you know, we'll see what the success rate is as far as, you know, earned runs and home runs. I'm not even worried about strikeouts. Just get out. Um, But last night, for me, was the way John Mosellock and the Cardinals envisioned this rotation being is veteran guys who can handle the moment, get up there in the innings, and you know, hopefully not burn out your bullpen. Yeah. 
Last night, you're right. That's that's how it's supposed to look because the defense played well too. Jordan Walker made a sensational Ooh, grab on right. Big boy can Dove, fly. Yes. Absolutely, uh, that was He's big. Way. You know, Kyle Gibson had talked <laughs> yeah, about the defense. That's yeah, um, <laughs> you know, Kyle Gibson talked about the defense following his performance last night. He got a big double play at one point. That's how it should look. That's how mm-hmm. it should look for most of the rotation, quite frankly. Miles Michaelis tonight. That's how it should look. Uh, Zach Thompson. That's how it should look. Stephen Matz. That's how it should look. Lynn. Sonny, Sonny Gray, those those are guys that are a little bit more higher uh, strikeout pitchers, but still use your defense behind you. You got a great middle of the middle of the order defense or middle of the uh, uh, field defense. Great job by Kyle Gibson. It was one start, but it was a big start. They needed it, especially coming off the series against the Dodgers in which they dropped three or four. Gauntlet next on 101 ESPN. Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter, back with you here. And, Anthony, we've got our guy Stewie from Stewart's American Mortgage Corporation online with us. Stewie, I want to talk today about people who not only purchase one home, but then go and buy other homes after that, maybe places like Florida and things like that. What have you got for us? Jamie, different kinds of purchases for home ownership dictate different rates. If you buy an investment property, it's going to be the highest rate with the highest cost. If you buy a second home, it's the next highest rate with the next highest cost. The best rate with the best terms is your own home, the owner-occupied home that you live in. So we are having customers now take the cash out that they need to buy a house in Innsbruck, to buy that condo in Florida, so they won't be subject to the higher rates and the higher costs of the other products. Not only is that... is is good for you, but you know there are bidding wars going on over there. If you take the cash out on your house and then you go to the seller in the house in condo, the condo in Florida, and you say, hey, I'm going to give you cash for this, no financing contingency, you're going to get looked at much quicker and your offer is going to get accepted quicker than everybody else's. So put yourself in a better position to buy that house quick and easy and get the best terms by using your own house to get the cash out. Oh, but you do have to call Stewie, 314-324-4440. Again, that's 314-324-4440. You know, if, you, if you don't pick up the phone, at least call or text. You're not going to be able to take advantage of certain situations. And maybe where this actual situation doesn't necessarily suit you, but something else will guarantee you on that. When you're buying a house, you're refinancing, you're consolidating debt, Stewie's there for you, and he will save you money. So give him a call or Google the bag alone and pick up the number from there. Stewie, keep up the great work. Hey, let's make sure they invite us to a Florida condo, guys. There you yeah, go. No Perfect. I'm Absolutely. In. NMLS number 226715.
categories, one challenger. Can you master the gauntlet? The gauntlet is powered by Master, your hometown source for business communications for more than 30 years. Visit Mastor.com. 404, your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler uh, with... Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, Andrew Marshall, Anthony Salter. We welcome in Patrick to play in the gauntlet today. What's up, Patrick? Not much, gentlemen. How are you doing? Doing good. First time? Long time listener, first time caller. All right. Well, nice. appreciate uh, right. you listening. Appreciate you playing today. So for your first gauntlet experience, would you like to take on Marsh, Kerry, Jamie, or me today? Well, I'm feeling a little hockey, so, Anthony, I'll go with you. Yeah, good call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I looked at Jamie, but then in my head, I'm like, no, nah, he wants me. I thought right. Patrick was coming right for me. No, 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 no. He likes hockey. He knows he's yeah. going to get hockey with me. Patrick, good luck to you, bud. You too, sir. Thank you. All right, Anthony's going to head off to the cone of silence now. Patrick, what I need you to do is tell Marshy to spin that wheel. Marshy, give that wheel a little spinny spin spin. Oh, extra there. All right. All right, so Patrick, do you are you really wanting hockey or you just want Anthony in hockey? Oh, uh, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, how do you feel about, oh, I don't know, random, because that's what you got today? I guess I'll have to do, deal with it. All, All right. right, so Marshy's going to hand out the... Uh, the questions here, and uh, while he's doing that, we'll go over the the game plan. Each question is worth two points if you do not use the options and answer correctly. If you do use the options and answer correctly, you get one point. And of course, if you get it wrong, well, you get zero points. If we're tied, after four questions, we'll go to a tiebreaker, and we will get a winner in the gauntlet here today. Patrick, are you ready? Let's rock and roll. All right, buddy, here we go. Random the category. Question one. In the fifth season of Game of Thrones, Dar Dar da Daenerys. Daenerys. There you go. <laughs> finally gets to ride which type of creature? Options. Is it a kraken, a dragon, or a mastodon? Dragon. Final answer? Uh, final answer. All right, thank you. Question number two. Of the world's five ocean basins, which is the smallest? Ocean basins. Should have paid attention in sixth grade social studies. <laughs> Options. Is it the Arctic Ocean, Southern Ocean, or Indian Ocean? The Southern Ocean. Final answer. Question number three. Name the Alice in Wonderland character who keeps a firework launching cake on standby. Options. Options are Bill the Lizard, the Mad Hatter, or the White Rabbit. Oh, it's either the Mad Hatter or the White Rabbit. Um, Mad Hatter, final answer. All right, Patrick, final question of the day. Swimming legend Michael Phelps attended college where? Hmm, I want to say Stanford. Oh, but I better go with the options just in case. All right. Was it Syracuse, John Hopkins, or Michigan? Let's go with Syracuse. Final answer. All right. Thank you. Okay. We're going to get our guy Anthony back in here. While he's coming in here, Patrick, how you feeling, bud? Well, I answered four questions. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. It's All right, opinion. Anthony's back in the studio. Going to plug his ears in here. We'll get to talk to Anthony here about the cone of silence in a second. How's going to silence, buddy? It was silent. Yeah. No Mike Ryder again. I saw that. You're all by yourself. In all there. by myself. I got no tunes. It happens a lot to you. Hmm. 
It's kind of nice. It is. It's an only quiet time. As an only child, you little, need it. Little me time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Recharge. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, nobody. hopefully you packed a lunch in there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anthony. Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, nope. Not this time. Okay. Not tonight. <laughs> Random uh-huh. is your category. <laughs> Question number one. Uh-huh. In the fifth season of Game of Thrones, mm. Daenerys finally gets to ride which type of creature? My buddies have told me you got to watch Game of Thrones. I've it's never right, it one. is I've right up your alley. It's oh, right amazing. up your alley. You never, oh, oh, man. Never. There's watched, a new season coming out. Oh, great. More, oh, really? more to that, catch up that's on. The, uh, oh, don't say it. Okay. Yeah, careful now. Uh, I've never seen it. The only, the only like creature that I. I I know it was like a big deal in it though is it would be a, a dragon, so I'll just I'll just go with dragon. Final answer. Alright. Question number two. Of the world's five ocean basins, which is the smallest? Ocean basin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of what? The Atlantic, <laughs> the Pacific. Gulf of Mexico? Arctic? I didn't even know there was five. How about we narrow this down? Can I have the options, please? <laughs> the Arctic Ocean, okay. Southern Ocean, or Indian Ocean? Mm. <laughs> I think the Arctic is really small. I'll go Arctic. Final answer. Question number three. Name the Alice in Wonderland character who keeps a firework launching cake on standby. Boy, if you ask me an Alice in Chains question, <laughs> that'd be better. Different movie. Yeah. Can I have the, uh, can I have the options? Options are. <laughs> Let's talk about the band, Jim. Bill the Lizard, <laughs> the Mad Hatter, or the White Rabbit? Uh, well, the Mad Hatter, that would, that would make sense, right? So I'm not going to go with that, Doug. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's it? The White Rabbit and what? Bill the Lizard. I've never heard of Bill the Lizard. Let's go with Bill the Lizard. Final answer. <laughs> Let's go with the outlier here. <laughs> right, I don't right, even know right. if he's in the story, but... Final question. Man. Swimming legend Michael Phelps attended college where? Oh, man. <clears throat> Options. Syracuse, Johns Hopkins, or Michigan? Syracuse, Johns Hopkins, or Michigan? Yeah. Let's go with the outlier. And John Hopkins. Hopkins. Final answer. Johnny Hopkins and Sloan Kettering. There we go. Okay. Let's go over this. Wow. Let's start right there. Question four. Swimming legend Michael Phelps attended college dot, 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 where? Patrick, you took the options. You said Syracuse. Anthony, you also took the options. You said Johns Hopkins. Gary, answer is Michigan. Michigan. He's a Wolverine, guys. Mm. Sorry about that. Go blue. Mm-hmm. Go <laughs> blue. Let's go to question Unless three. Unless you carry, then you don't even call. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, dial yeah. it in here, okay? Yeah, my bad. No, it's my fault. It's not time for shots of carry. You're right. It's plenty Especially of time for that. Especially left. when I'm over gopher. <laughs> question uh, three. Name the Alice in Wonderland character who keeps a firework launching cake on standby. Patrick took the options, said the Mad Hatter. Anthony, sense. you took the options and said, well, this one doesn't make sense at all, so it has to be the answers. Bill the Lizard, I don't even know if he's in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Marshy, answer is? It is the Mad Hatter. Yeah, your logic worked against you yep. on that mm. one, Anthony. So Some point. we've got one nothing Patrick. I think that point is here now. <laughs> <laughs> Some point. Mm. All right, next question. one nothing Patrick. Of the world's five ocean basins, which is the smallest? Patrick, you took the option. Said the Southern Ocean. I don't know if that exists. I was, I, I, uh, right. But that's okay. I didn't want to say it. And be yeah. Sp- it doesn't. Anthony, you took the options. You said the Arctic. Mm. Carrie, answer is? It is the Arctic. Arctic. Ah. We're all tied up. Had it all along. 1-1 one, one, headed into our final question. Real barn burner here. In the fifth season of Game of Thrones, 
Daenerys finally gets to ride which <laughs> type of creature? Patrick. You said dragon. Mm. Anthony, you also said dragon. Marshy, answer is? Well, gentlemen, you are correct. It is a dragon. Both of you got it right with dragon. Anthony did not need the options. Right. Patrick! You have chosen oh, Jamie. poorly. You lose, son of a... <laughs> oh, Patrick, he got you on that question, buddy. Hey, it's all good, fellas. Sorry, Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Nice job, though, hey. man. Good, good game, Anthony. Yeah, I appreciate it. You too, you too. Now, some people will say, boy, you guys stunk today. That's not how I feel, and that's not how you should feel either. Yeah. Three to two. Good matchup. Yeah, me knows. Yep. Patrick. Good job. Yeah, I oh, appreciate it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Have a great right. day, Patrick. Thanks, man. Uh, hey, hey, see you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank, thank you very much. much. See you, man. Southern Ocean is actually an ocean. It is. Yes. Yeah. I think there were only four when we were in school, though. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It was the yeah. Arctic, Arctic, Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian. And I, I don't know when the, the Southern, Southern Ocean, Ocean was Where added. Where the hell did that come from? I don't know. Mm. Probably around the same time Pluto was yeah, not maybe. a planet. Yeah. Or maybe when it they brought planet, Pluto and then was back. It, or maybe when, it's all Pluto's fault. Maybe. Maybe. Or they when they started water. calling tomatoes fruits, you know? It's always been a fruit. Mm. Nah, okay. 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 Carrie, what? Yeah. I mean, always, back in our day, it was, it was, it was a it was vegetable. A, Thank it was, you. It was a fruit, man. Yeah. Anthony, you need to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> you should watch I it. I haven't seen it either. I have it's right on my Oh, man. All that fantasy stuff? No, 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 no. No, it is. That kind of fantasy stuff? I don't know if I'm into it. What kind of sound? Sounds like there is a little bit of that kind of fan fantasy. Is it? Well, or the a other little, kind of fantasy. I Jamie's a little bit of one. Well, actually, yeah. it's kind of disturbing. Oh. You, oh. you got to watch it. You okay. should watch you it, should though. You should watch it. In House of the Dragon. Is the one that's out now. Is, mm. he didn't is out now. Say. Season two comes out this summer. I haven't okay. watched the spinoff show. Ooh. It's fantastic. Yeah. Right. I believe you guys. Check it out. I do. Yeah. You should watch Dynasty first. You yeah. should watch that. We're, we're waiting on oh, you. Oh, that yeah. old show, like no, 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 um, not that one, not Dallas the Texas Dynasty. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> We're going to text from Thanks Dad. If R.L. Chalk says there are four oceans, there are four oceans. Yes, go. absolutely. <laughs> I don't know when they slid that fifth one in there. Yeah. It, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. No. All right. Do the Cardinals have something going on with the rotation once Sonny Gray returns? That's next on 101 ESPN. Gentlemen, are you currently using ED meds? If you are and you're not going to the medicine shop, odds are you're paying too much for those ED meds. And I know which ones that you're talking about. The little blue pill, the gummy, all that stuff. They are overpriced. Get over to the medicine shop. They are your destination for cheap ED meds. They've got a generic called Sildenafil for less than $2 a pill. Gentlemen, less than $2 a pill is awesome for you guys so please get over there and check it out prescription is required of course 
and maybe you have another medicine or other medicines in your family that you require on a regular basis, refills, and and sometimes it gets stressful because you've got a crazy schedule or your son or your daughter or your kids overall have athletics and you just can't seem to get to the pharmacy, don't worry about it. The medicine shop will come to you. They offer free discreet shipping and delivery to your home or your workplace for that matter. It's an awesome program. Uh, I use that program frequently and you will absolutely love it. And then if you need anything at all, please stop by the pharmacy. The team over there is just fantastic. Unbelievable customer service. Any questions you have, they've got the answers. They're gonna point you in the right direction too, whether it's cold and flu season, allergies, you name it, they're taking care of you. They're gonna make you part of the pharmacy family. So please visit them in person. If not, visit them online at stcharles.pharmacy. That's stcharles.pharmacy. It's fascinating on 101 ESPN. What'd you learn, Kerry? Are you doing, I'm reading it too. In 1999, the Ocean Committee recognized the fifth ocean. I graduated in 1999. So and I was in I, 2000. I didn't pay attention in 1999. Um, you were already in the league. Oh, yeah. For like four <laughs> years. Well, really? well into yeah, the league. I was no not studying uh, geography. <laughs> no, you were not. I don't remember learning about that, wow. though. Anatomy. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> yeah. Anatomy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Grace. Great show. Gray's in that. Mm. Yep. <laughs> What's that, Seattle Mercy or something? What do they call that place? I don't know. I never really watched it. Uh, it's not a bad show. That's fine. Watching a little bit of it. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> that's a show where you don't voluntarily watch it. That's correct. Somebody else yep. is yeah. watching it and I'm you're in the room. Married to her. Yep. Yeah. It's not terrible out of all like the shows that... You could be half forced to watch. All right. Uh, do the Cardinals have something going on with the rotation once Sonny Gray returns? Well, we don't know. Yeah, we don't. How do you know? He hasn't pitched all year. He hasn't pitched all year, and Miles Michaelis got lit up like a Christmas tree in his first start, so yeah. we'll see how he goes tonight. That's got to be better, right? Like, well, let's really break this down, okay? <laughs> Miles Michaelis, terrible. Zach Thompson, terrible. Lance Lynn, f- fine. Like fast lane, fine. Uh, okay. Steven Matz, solid. Good. Kyle well, Gibson, outstanding. There you go. So you got terrible, terrible, fine, fast lane, fine. <laughs> okay. Pretty good. I don't know. I would say pretty good for Steven Matz. Excellent. Yeah, we're getting better. See? Game by game. I told you I needed to see five games. By so game 100, 50. just wait till we have uh, what we figured out. I, I hope we figure it out. 100? We got to wait well, that long? If we keep getting incrementally better. That's true. Yeah. You know? That's good call, Jamie. It's yeah. going to be a while. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's a ways out. Yeah. It'll be here for a while. Here's where I'm at with uh, with the rotation, guys. Let me know how you feel. I, I don't know. Again, 
uh, if you if you want to take like the big picture approach here, if you watch other rotations and then circle back to the Cardinals, you're like, oh yeah, I'm still. <laughs> I don't know. Well, if, if you, you just watch the Cardinals, rotation are you looking? The at? Dodgers. I mean, take, <laughs> take a good one. <laughs> Dodgers is pretty good. Uh, the Dodgers. Yeah. Take a I good one. Yeah. They're like was, Atlanta. I, I, Dodgers. I wanted that. Um, I mean, hell, Cincinnati looks pretty good right now. That offense looks really good. Spencer Steer, grand salami last night for them in extras. Uh, Pittsburgh remains undefeated. Your Pittsburgh Pirates. My Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look at good starting rotations around the league, you really got to get to like the fifth starter where you're like, man, fine. What do you got? <laughs> sure, sure, sure the group. <laughs> do you want me to do it? All right. In all caps, which means this person is yelling. Yeah. That's what my kids told me. Dad, when you type in all caps, it means you're yelling. Sure. I said, thank you. So I continue to type in all caps. Yeah. You're always yelling. <laughs> I'm always yelling. So from the 937, should, I, should I, I, I guess I should be, why don't you hold them accountable when they're bad and caress their bells <laughs> when they're good? <laughs> End quote. That's the most, I got, that is the most honest text we have ever gotten in the history of this show. It really is. Because that's how I feel like, like a lot of the, the listeners and the fans want us to react. They win, we're all in. They lose, destroy them. I yeah. mean, leave nothing left of their souls. That is the most honest text I feel like we've ever gotten. Did I we don't not think they do had that yesterday? Though. I thought we did. I thought that's yes, what we did. but I don't think maybe today, it's to, not to the other half of that texter's point, mm. we need to be caressing their jingle bells a little bit more. Mm. So yeah. let's do that. I'm, Guys, I'm, let's transition. Let's get the mindset going. The let's get these glasses on. From mm -hmm. the 314. We're saying Gibson was great because it was all in caps. Yeah. <laughs> Question mark. Didn't he give up two dingers? He gave up two runs. Solo shots. If, yeah. I, if he gives up two runs a game and has an ERA of two, right, I'll okay. take it. And go seven. Sign me up. Yeah. You don't every want fifth I want a shutout. <laughs> <laughs> every game. Every pitcher's giving up home runs. I mean, if you don't want to. Look, you're going to give up home runs. If, if there are a couple of solo. You don't want to do that every game. But if you give up two solo shots and the, and the big picture is you go seven innings and otherwise, you know, play, pitch very well. Yeah, he was. He was excellent last night. Kyle Gibson was excellent. So let's let's uh, let's jingle some bells here, okay? Mm. Brandon Donovan, outstanding mm -hmm. performance last night out of old Donnie. I mm -hmm. agree. Jordan Walker, great catch. Didn't flail as much last night. Waited until the last at bat before he chased a pitch that was 14 feet outside the strike zone. <laughs> Excellent catch last night. Maybe he should use a bigger bat. He may be. Is there maybe a bat that, length? That works. He might. Is yeah. there a rule how long your bat can be? Yes. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But how if big? You can how, swing it if you can carry. What about you how round it is? It. Is there a rule against how thick your bat is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's rules against that. Jim. What are those rules? I don't know the exact ones. Because if I was a player, you're I'd want to have the biggest, longest, thickest bat. You're thinking in the like clubhouse. what are you going to drop for? Flintstones bat or something like that, or Bam Bam's bat, <laughs> yeah. right? But in adult size <laughs> That's is what they you're calling too. Yeah. Bam Bam. Yeah. You bring out that bat, you better call you something. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 You still got to swing that lumber. Yeah, that's you fine. Can swing it. I'll you just be able, if you can swing that. it, you should be able to use it. <laughs> Jamie, uh, <laughs> everything that you've just said <laughs> banned in Major League Baseball. Albert actually had a few different bats. I believe he switched out his bats before he hit his uh, 700th home run. What are you trying to say, Marsh? What I'm are you saying? trying to say, Marsh? He has different bats. Like, it's okay to have different bats. Like different an Albert lengths, Bell, different... Sammy Sosa type of? No, no, no. no. Yeah. I'm like legit yeah. yeah. saying. Are we cutting clarify. the bat in half? Or like, no, I'm legit right saying now? that you can have different bats, the length different and the sizes. Length. So, and different sizes. Different, and different, different like, that be one's a maple bat. Wouldn't you get up to the plate and you got a different size bat every time in your hands? I mean, not if you're Albert Pujols. He can do whatever he wants. Well, maybe you want to. can hit whatever he wants. Yeah, maybe somebody's throwing a lot of off speed. You want you want maybe a barrel that's going to be a little slower through the zone. So well, somebody's up there humping it at 99, so you go a little lighter. Okay, Jamie. <laughs> I see where this is going. You go up there with that donut on your back. Yeah. Are you sold? That's illegal, I think. <laughs> I think all of it is illegal. Is it? I think so. We got, got to try Everything it. Jamie just said banned in Major League <laughs> Baseball. <laughs> My league would be fun. Oh, man. <laughs>
I'm, just, I'm waiting for the... And then you can bet on your own team. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You should be able to bet on your own team. To win. But you can only bet on them to win. To win. Yeah. The but you got to bet every game because if you don't bet, then clearly you're saying you don't No, well, if win. you don't have the finances to bet every game. Uh, you, you, you can't you, go spending my money for me. Listen, you can't not bet on your team to win. What? Because that's essentially saying we're going to lose. Uh, what if the mm. wind is... Something's off. Wind is coming in from center field. So I'm not betting on my team. I was out late last that night. Something like that. I saw the pitcher out late last <laughs> night. Yeah. I'm not betting today. Nope. <laughs> it's, it's a fast lane on 101 ESPN. We're going to play Are You Sold next. So if you have an Are You Sold statement, you can send it into the Air Comfort Service tax line. Like, Are You Sold? Uh, Jamie's League will work. 314 399 9646. Are You Sold next? Cheap, cheap, fun, fun. Let's get dirty. Over at Dirt Cheap, they are your one-stop party shop here in St. Louis. Each location has amazing selections for you. If it's the beer category, they've got you covered there. If it's the wines, red wine, the white wine, or the spirits of any kind, whether it's vodka, tequila, or the bourbon category, which is obviously a personal favorite, they've got the best prices available for you. And right now, let's not forget about Cinco de Mayo. Right around the corner, maybe you pick up some of that Modelo, some of that Corona, maybe a nice tequila, a margarita mix. We all love Cinco de Mayo, but do it right by stopping by Dirt Cheap and picking those things up. And do it right also by downloading the Dirt Cheap app. I was on there last night navigating around, looking at some things. I was so impressed at how easy the app is to use and also the savings that are available. And they've got different clubs that you can be a part of. they got raffles that are coming up. You won't miss anything if you download the app and check things out. And the best part about it is you can order your spirits online and have them delivered to your home. What a convenience that is. If you're getting ready, especially again for that Cinco de Mayo party, you don't want to be running around all over the place. No, put in your order, have Dirt Cheap bring it all to your home, and then just relax and enjoy. It's exactly what I'm going to do. It's exactly what you should do. And please remember to have fun, but be careful out there.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update. Driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cardinals defeat the San Diego Padres last night by a final score of 6 to 2. He'll be back in action tonight as Miles Michaelis takes the mound going up against you, Darvish. First pitch is at 840. The Blues took down the Edmonton Oilers last night in overtime. 3-2 the final score. Thanks to Brandon Sod's game-winning goal. The Blues. Three points behind the L.A. Kings for that final wild card spot. They'll take on the Nashville Predators on Thursday. Pre-game starts at 6 o'clock. Puck drop is at 7, and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. We'll talk with Joe Vitale here in about 10 minutes or so, so stay tuned for that. Also, Jimmy Snuggerud is heading back to Minnesota for his junior season. We talked a little bit about that earlier in the show. If you missed anything from today's show, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or check out the free 101 mobile app. Just head to the podcast page. You'll find all of our interviews and full shows there, and it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. We will also talk with Kyle Gibson at 5 o'clock as well. But coming up next, are you sold? If you have an are you sold statement, send it our way to the Air Comfort Service text line 314-399-9646. Are you sold? Coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? and Jamie Rivers. I'm Anthony Stalter. Cardinals back in action tonight. Miles Michaelis will take the hill against the Padres. You Darvish 840 will be the first pitch. Miles Michaelis needing to bounce back from a, a rough outing in L.A. last week. I give you all kudos. You too. Because these two what? are children. He's hilarious. What? He does things and I'm like, what the hell are you, <laughs> the hell are you doing? <laughs> And we just what? started laughing. Wait, that was that was as bad as my lack of cough button yesterday. I didn't care that you coughed in my ear oh. holes. <laughs> just the rest of St. Louis. They, they might have cared, but I didn't care. I ripped a piece of paper off. He scared the hell out of me. What like, the hell yeah. was he doing? You never know. Oh. Oh. I know what we're doing now. Lineup game, baby. Let's go, baby. There we go. All right, you Darvish on the hill. Right-hander. Donovan. Right. Mm-hmm. Donovan's got to be back, right? Oh, yeah. Donny boy. Donnie. All right. Show us Brendan Donovan. No. He's waving me off. He's not ready. Oh, he's not ready. you got to give me a second to all get right. all this okay. stuff. All right. well, Sound Marshy, yeah. when you fire off the air horn, yeah, I we're figure ready we're go. ready to go. Well, here. hang on. All right. I'll just, you know what I'll do, guys? I'll read number one, two. Take our time here. Three, mm-hmm. four. Okay. Good radio. Five, <laughs> six. Seven, Are we close, Marshy? There's eight, a thing called open and loading, and so you have to load the sounders in. PC load letter. How long does it take your load? I'm ready. <laughs> you good to go? Ready to fire? Show us Brennan Donovan, please. Donnie. Hey, there this is. headband's pretty cool. All right. All right. Paul Goldschmidt. Got to be. RL Chalk. Show us. Paul Goldschmidt. Chalk. Chalk. Yeah. Get my tub of chalk. There we go, baby. This one, this one might be, might be a little change up. I don't you know. You want to say carp, right? I know I, you do. I mean, no. Mm. He'll be you, you know what? Let's go. Let's go ahead and go with uh, Nolan Gorman. Show us Nolan Gorman. No, no, no. I, t- I knew it. Well, then why'd you say because it? Because no one else said anything. Well, we were evaluating. Oh, okay. Ben, Matt Carpenter, hell no. I don't want to go with Carp. You I didn't say that. There. Jamie said, I said that. that. Uh, well, you said Matt Carpenter. But oh, Harry, we're allowed to discuss. All right, yeah. sorry. Oh, okay, who you got? I don't know. Let's, See, let's, let's, let's regroup. Let's things. Sometimes we work our way through it. I knew no one was going to Are you guys ready? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. hmm. That's rich. Okay. Uh, they don't have a rich. Richie Palacios. Richie Palacios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. MVP. MVP. Uh, okay. So let's evaluate here. 
It's not it's, not, righty. it's not Nolan Arenado. Yeah, you Darvish. Do you do you see that? I don't I think see it's a, Jordan Walker. Well, so that was my thought. But if it's going with this lefty righty thing that we think he's going, you want to go Matt Carpenter or Alec Burleson? Could Burley get in here? I could see that at the three right. hole though. All right, it's, like, it's a reach, man. <laughs> go for it. Come on. Why not? You think so? Yeah. All right. Show me that big burly bugger. Cut it out. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah, well, that felt not so they nice. They could move up Arnado. And they would. I, no. well, left, the only right, right clean left, up. right. Except he doesn't hit a run. Left, right, left, right. It's like marching. Left, right, left, right. It's not Carpenter. Left, right, left. Some marching is different. Well, this is the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. All right. Show us Matt Carpenter. Oh, gee. I'm you, sorry. You did it again. Yeah. Whoa. What are you doing? As soon as, what are you, you doing? She said, I'm sorry. Like, you I can say carp. You can say, you, as soon as you say show us, uh, yeah, you're committed. That's like I final answer. It is. I'm new to this. Carrie, I'm going to need you to settle right, down. I'll slow down. Okay? I'm, I'm usually eager. To pump the brakes a little bit. I know you are, and I, I just, appreciate that about you. Yeah, you're always pushing forward. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we got to really think here, guys. We're in a It's going to be a righty. Okay, so Walker? I think it's Jordan It Walker. might be Jordan You think Walker. he moves Walker up? Yeah. Maybe. All right, go for it, Jamie. No, why don't you say it for a Yeah, you haven't said anything. Yeah, nothing. You haven't said it yet. Sitting Show us, because I don't believe it. I think, he, I, think he moved, I think he moves up Nolan Arenado. Okay, we'll I say don't think he, Well, then say, say Nolan Arenado. Show us Nolan Arenado. Mm, okay. I knew that. <laughs> oh, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> you had Matt Carpenter up there a second ago. I was discussing it. They didn't say his name. Ah, I knew that. But, go for it, then. No. You. All right. Now. Fine. Show us. Jordan Walker. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Who is playing? <laughs> Mason Wynn. No. <laughs> There's no way. Who the? We Contreras? Can't. And then Herrera's catching? Contreras a DH? Oh, yeah. He had a home run that, yeah. last night. Contreras okay. had a home run last night. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think outside the box here. Let's think I'm outside okay the bond here, guys. Yeah. Do it. Go ahead. Show us that big Willie Contreras. DH. Wow. No, no. Uh, just mid. Uh, check. All right. So, so is he DH? I think he has to be. Yeah, and then think? Herrera's in there. Because uh, right. right. Michaelis hates pitching to Contreras. Yeah. He said that several times. Several times last year and then once yeah. in the offseason. All right. Yep. Yeah. So this is. Denied it in the offseason. There's three things uh, Miles Michaelis hates my boat name, Jamie's my nickname, name. and Will's <laughs> Contreras catching oh, for him. Man, <laughs> Show us. No, no, no. He's a gold glove winner and perennial all star. Oh, listen to Mr. Gold Glove over here. Come on. Okay. Um, okay. So we sit in fifth. All right. So this is where I think Gorman slides so in. He still needs a second base. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I like it. What do you think? You think Gorman is here? Well, he's at five or six, in my opinion. You don't think he's getting a day off? From what? He hasn't hit anything. The, the, from that. Yeah. I go Nolan Gorman. You go ahead. Are you sure? Yep. Yeah. Show us Nolan Gorman. Boo. That hurts. That stings a little bit. What if Bur- what if what if this is Burleson? What is he playing? He already got a DH. Yeah. Maybe we don't. Did you see Maybe that arm don't. in right field? Ah. Maybe Walker's out too. He hasn't hit anything. I say Alec Burleson. All right, All right. Go, ahead. go ahead. Show us Alec Burleson. Alec, we have a problem. Early to the rescue. Okay. What he's playing. No idea where we're at here. The, is this Herrera? It better be Matt Carpenter if they want to win. <laughs> 2-0 when Matt Carpenter's in the lineup. Lefties back-to-back? No. All right. Uh, is this Herrera? This could be Walker. This could be Herrera. This could be Gorman, Gorman if they move him down a little bit. I don't think Gorman's playing. Well, it could be Brandon Crawford because Ollie likes the old guys in the six hole. And, and Crawford is playing second as opposed to what's his nuts? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> um, Carrie, what do you think? Yvonne Herrera. Right, go for okay. it. Show us Yvonne Herrera. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got quick buzzed on that mm-hmm. one. quick. Yeah. All right, hey. show us Jordan Walker. What's his angle? What angle? Launch! Launching now. All right. Sorry, guys. I just decided to shoot from the hip All there. Right. Good job. Now, the seven hole, I think it's it's our catcher. Good call. Yeah. Show right. us Yvonne Herrera. 
I'm sorry. It's wrong. Mm, maybe Wilson is still maybe catching. Is catching. Yeah, maybe he's catching. <laughs> <laughs> or Wilson well, is a DH. DH. Cash. That means Gorman has to play, guys. Or it's Crawford. Or Crawford's not. Okay. Do you want to go Gorman? You want to go Matt Carpenter? I would like to if the Cardinals want to win. Yeah, yeah. No, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. It's a place. That, can't oh, have Carp yeah, and Burley in the same right. Player, right. In my you opinion. Don't, you don't want Carp at second base? Not really. Not right. So you, you think Gorman here? I don't know. Go for it. Show us Nolan Gorman. He ain't right. Okay. He's, he's, he's playing. So he ain't <laughs> I would like to go across. Guys, guys, guys. Nolan Gorman's probably not right. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, you tried here. Three, four, five. Uh, I would like to go with Crawford. All right. Have at it. I don't care anymore. Go ahead. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I don't mean I don't sure. care. I just like, I'm like, so like, I don't even remember who the hell's playing anywhere now. Show us Brandon Crawford. Okay. Is this Matt Carpenter? Did we go say Herrera at seven? Yeah. Yes. We did. We let, we started off with that. Yeah, that's how we get to figure out Contreras is catching. Matt Carpenter. Show us Matt Carpenter. No. God. Okay. Uh, who the hell Mason else? Wynn. Maybe they moved him up. God, no. I don't know. But we still were missing a we guy. Suck. <laughs> Did we say Crawford at seven? Yeah. We said Crawford. Son of a. What about Victor Scott? Uh, and he put Gorman in eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a snotted everywhere. <laughs> it's probably a lefty. Uh, is it? Victor Scott. Victor Scott, sure. Right. Yeah. Well, show, show us Victor Scott. Great Scott. Oh, Too fast. Too fast. Focus. Speed. I am speed. All right, so is it Mason Wynn or Crawford here? Because we don't have a second baseman. Crawford can play second base. Yeah, I say it's Crawford. Okay. And Gorman's out of lineup. And I think Wynn is nine. Yeah. All right. Show us Crow. Mm. All right. Maybe this is... All right, maybe Nolan Donovan. Gorman. Maybe Donovan's at second. Burleson is in the outfield. Hmm. And this is Carpenter. Matt Carpenter. Go for it. For what? Show us Matt Carpenter. What position? Yeah, Jeez, thank God. Please. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Hey, this is Mason Wynn. Show us. Mason Wynn. <laughs> Show us Nolan Gorman. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell's left? We're missing somebody. Is Fermin somebody. still in this team? We're missing some. Who Taylor Motter signed a minor league deal. Show us. Did you say Nolan Gorman? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We've tried him every time. Did we said Matt Carpenter? Yeah. And Who Crawford. Who the hell is left? Crawford. So we got Walker. Siani. Herrera. Siani. Herrera. Did you say Herrera? No, we did no. not. Show no. us Yvonne Herrera. <laughs> Show us Siani. Michael. <laughs> Michael. 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 Not Michael Phelps. You're Michael Sarah. <laughs> what is he, where is he playing? I don't even know what position that guy is. Show us Mason Wynn. I'm watching the Futures game, oh and God. this thing's all over Instagram. <laughs> it's like, this guy threw a ball 100 across the top. That's awesome. Oh, that's but, like, God. how many throwing errors does he have? Shut up. Okay, run it real quick, Marsh, and then we'll wow. play uh, the home runs and stuff like that after uh, the next two interviews here. All right, so <laughs> leading off, second baseman, Brendan Donovan, batting oh, second, gosh. first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt, batting third, catching, Wilson Contreras, your cleanup hitter, third baseman, Nolan Arnato, your DH, batting fifth, Alec Burleson, batting sixth in right field, Jordan Walker, batting seventh in center field, Victor Scott, batting eighth in left field. <sighs> Siani's batting eighth and in left field, if you guys remember. <sighs> and batting ninth, the shark stop, Mason Wynn. All right, we'll play our uh, home run derby and all that after we talk to Joe Vitale, who's up next, and Kyle Gibson, who's at 5 o'clock. Joe Vitale, little blue sake next. Purchase an HVAC system and receive a $1,600 rebate, a 16-year warranty at SwissAirSTL.com.
Are you currently in the market for replacement windows? If so, please call my friends over at Window World. That number is 314-993-1800. Let's not forget that they are the preferred window of your St. Louis Blues. And why is that? Well, that's because Window World uses a double-strength glass that gives it a strength that's not commonly used in replacement windows. I know this because I went into the showroom, stood on one of these windows, and it didn't break. I knew then that we had a quality window. And not only is it good for breakage, it's good for the efficiency of it, too. So when the hot summer air is trying to fight its way into your house, don't worry about it. Window World, with their double-strength glass, keeps that hot air out and the cold air out in the wintertime. And all of it is backed up with a lifetime warranty that covers all parts, glass breakage, and labor. And Window World is still offering 18 months, same as cash financing, with approved credit. All you have to do is give them a call. I'm Jamie River sent you in. That number, again, is 314-993-1800. 314-993-1800 or visit them at windowworldstlouis.com. Joey Vitale views things a little differently. Just imagine how he looks at hockey. Whoa! This is The View from Vitale, brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. It's a fast lane on 101 ESPN. Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, Anthony Saltzer, let's head to our 101 ESPN Celebrity Line. We're welcome in by Joe Vitale. What's up, Joey? Hey, boys, what's going on? Uh, well, we're, we discussed the Jimmy Snuggerud situation earlier. He's going to go back to Minnesota. He wants to win a title with the Golden Gophers. And what are your thoughts as this relates to the Blues? Yeah, hey, I tell you what. I mean, yeah, that, that's the big news. Uh, first and foremost, I, I am surprised personally by the decision for Jimmy. You know, I saw him play a lot of the World Juniors on TV, and I thought this kid was, was primed and ready to go for pro hockey. And, you know, it's interesting It's interesting with his decision, you know, and, and you really just can't blame him. It's his decision at the end of the day, and he has every right to go back one more time. And I just was talking to Jeremy Buckerford, uh, who just spoke to uh, Jimmy Snuggerud 
moments ago and we were kind of chatting about the discussion and, and, and Jeremy told me to, to go ahead with the information. He, he has an article coming out probably within the hour. So all the athletics will be, be on the lookout for that. It's, it's going to be a really good article that breaks down Jimmy's decision. But, you know, JR said the highlights were from the conversation were, were pretty simple. This was Jimmy's decision. Uh, the Blues did offer him, and not only offer him, but they offered him to come in and wear a Blues uniform this season. He'd be NHL ready this year, and he, he ended up turning that down. So pretty crazy to think about an opportunity like that. But his decision was made because, you know, he felt like he didn't play great hockey over the last couple months leading into the tournament. Uh, he missed his chance at a title. His dad missed the title, and he he definitely wants to do right by the Minnesota Gophers and win a national title. So you got to give it to him. Uh, certainly, a player was capable of the NHL this year. I think he would have helped the Blues this year, but ultimately, his decision to go back and play one more year and return as a junior for the University of Minnesota. Joey, it's I look at that and like I don't know about you. But if somebody offered that to me after my second year of junior hockey to just come in and wear the NHL uniform or for you when you're at uh, Northeastern to be, you know, just given the opportunity like that, I would have found that really difficult to turn down. Uh, I mean, ribs, me too. I mean, me completely. I mean, so much can happen. So much can happen. Exactly. In, in a year. I mean, not to mention just the injuries, but you know, a year from now, put the injuries aside. I mean, it could be a completely different landscape for him. I mean, well, what's to say, what's to say the blues don't add a couple pieces this summer and maybe they're in a position where they're, they're fighting for a, a central division title this time next year. And then all of a sudden, Jimmy Sugger, you know, loses in the tournament and all of a sudden the opportunity, uh, yeah, it's, it's still going to be there for him eventually, but maybe this is a roster that's completely locked in and locked and loaded and ready for playoffs. And maybe he comes in and, and doesn't necessarily wear that blue note uniform even next year because of the team just being that dialed in. So every every year, every opportunity, you know, something opens, something closes. It could be an opportunity next year where it's actually a better opportunity. Maybe maybe this team's in, still in that transition mode and he comes right in and then he finds himself in, in a place where he's one year older. He's um, physically more mature. That's one good thing about college hockey is, you know, you, you do have the opportunity where you're only playing a couple games a week and you have the opportunity to get bigger, stronger, wiser across the board. Uh, but, no, I was I was surprised. And, and when Jeremy called me there and to, to hear that it was completely his decision, you know, he even in, in the article, you'll read it here, it should, like I said, should should drop in about an hour, uh, JR thought. But he talks about how Armstrong called him, Alexander Steen reached out to him, even Braden Shen reached out to Jimmy Snuggeroo. So I think he had the full support of St. Louis. It seemed as if it was all all things moving forward with him to wear a Blues uniform probably as early as, I think, Thursday or sometime this weekend, those California swings. But it looks like, as of now, it was uh, completely his call. And, and you have to, like I said, you know, you don't know what's going on through the mind of a certain kid, and, and everyone's in a different spot. But, uh, but he will be returning, and, and he feels very, very good about this team winning the national title, and that's on his radar right now. Joey, we're seeing college players decide to stay in school mainly because of NIL money. Are you aware of any NIL deals that Snuggaroo may have had and, and that could have been part of it as well? Yeah, no, honestly, Kerry, that's above my pay grade. I'm just a lonely old radio broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which is on the FM side of things if you're ever listening to the Blues game. But, you know, it's above my pay grade. I, I don't know anything about that. I'm still getting educated about the NIL stuff. I think it, it is a little blurry and gray at times, especially as it's new to the sport of hockey. So I, I don't I don't know that officially. I would imagine that there has probably something to do with it as you move forward. At least it will have an impact. I'm not saying it had an impact on his decision, but it will probably impact him, I would imagine, the next year or so too. Joe, we appreciate you, man. Sorry we'd cut it a little short here. We're a little late because we're screwing up the lineup game, but we always appreciate you. We'll talk to you next week. Hey, appreciate you boys as well. You guys have a great week. Now. You too. Thanks. This is Joe Vitale here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. You hear him uh, in a couple of days as the Blues take on the Predators on Thursday. Kyle Gibson, fresh off his excellent performance last night, will join us next in the Fast Lane.
I'll tell you, I uh, nearly screwed up my lawn and how Green Envy saved me once again. The fall came, the leaves came through. I, I just I decided to do a leaf pile for the kids. Had a leaf pile going on for a while. I'm like, you know what? I, I better I better get the leaves off the uh, off the grass. Well, one day turned into that accident. And the next thing you know, well, all those leaves just stayed there and they get damp. And then the grass underneath it, not great. Shame on me, right? Thankfully, I have Green Envy. After screwing up that one little portion in the yard, Green Envy came out a couple of times, and they already have grass growing again in that in that spot. It's going to be fine. And Green Envy, they do this all, all the time. They do it for me. They'll do it for you. Uh, whether it's whether it's weeds that have completely overtaken your house um, or your front lawn or your backyard, if there's a spot like you know trouble trouble area, whether it's by you're doing like I did or something else, maybe you just can't get grass to grow in a certain spot. Green Envy will come out, and if they you know they did it for me in certain areas on the side of my house, they'll they'll do it for you. Green Envy is outstanding. They use products that are formulated for everything here in Missouri, so you know you're getting the, the real deal. It's not some national generic <laughs> products that somebody comes out and it's ineffective for Missouri, Missouri soils. No, Green Envy, they do it right, they do it fantastic, and they'll have your yard looking the best in the neighborhood. 636-757-1600. Tell them Stalter Sanchez, Green Envy. Before your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler with Super Bowl champion Kerry Davis and former Blues defenseman Jamie Rivers. I'm Anthony Stalter. We head to our 101 ESPN celebrity line following his outstanding performance last night. Great start. First regular season start for Kyle Gibson in a St. Louis Cardinals uniform. Kyle joins us right now. Kyle, thanks, for, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, guys, no problem. How are you guys doing tonight? We're, well, we're doing great, certainly after uh, you guys won last night. Outstanding start. This is coming off. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions coming to you about spring training. You know, numbers-wise, not great, but you had said not worried at all. What what specifically going into that start last night left you feeling good? Um, I mean, I think the whole spring for me was trying to get my delivery uh, timed up and in tune. Um 
I know that sounds weird that, you know, it, it's something that should just always be there, but, um, you know, being tall and lanky, that's just not always the case. I got a lot of moving limbs and a lot of things flying every which <laughs> way. So, uh, you know, I, I've constantly been trying to fine tune that my whole career and just had a couple weeks in spring where the timing just wasn't right. I don't know if it was because I, uh, was just a little bit more anxious and amped up to pitch in those spring games or what. But, um, you know, the last couple outings, the one against the Cubs and the one yesterday finally had it kind of timed up and, and fluid and moving right. So um, that's my biggest takeaway from me in the spring. And then, you know, thankfully I was able to take it into yesterday. Kyle, how quickly in a game like last night do you real, do you know that, like, you've got it, you're on your stuff? You talked about there's – you know, a couple things in spring training and you're trying to get your timing up. But in a game like last night where it just felt like you were in a really great rhythm, how quickly do you know that? Well, I mean, I think I think from early I can feel that I have a good rhythm and that, you know, my stuff is where I want it to be. But, um, you know, kind of like just my whole career, right? You know, I'm, I'm someone who's, you know, trying to pitch to the situation and, and I've just got, you know, a lot of other factors. I don't have the 97 to 100 where I just go do the same thing and see what happens. So, you know, sometimes I can have great stuff and, you know, my approach matches up with what the offense is trying to do and you give up a few more hits than I did last night. Um, you know, last night I think Willie and I's uh, approach just matched up really well against what the Padres were trying to do. And on top of feeling good, I was able to, you know, we were able to really execute some pitches and use the defense and, and uh, our approach just, you know, possibly matched up to what, you know, they were not trying to do. Kyle, what was the feeling going into your first start in a new uniform uh, for the regular season? Were you excited, anxious, uh, just ready to get out there and get to it? Yeah, ready to get to it. Um, you know, it's uh, anytime you're with a new team, it's it's one of those things that you're trying to make a good first impression, but you also try not to put too much stock in just the one, right? I mean, you know, as a team, this is a 162-game season, and as a starter, I'm looking to do that 32 times. So, um, I definitely don't want to be uh, judged on my worst performances of the year and probably just not as fair to, you know, judge me on my five best games of the year. But, um, you know, you want to go out there and be as consistent as possible. So, um, yeah, I don't want to give up uh, 64 home runs on the year, but you can sign me up for 31 more of those and I'll probably be just fine. <laughs> Kyle, uh, a lot last year. Uh, was made of the new catcher here in St. Louis. And, and in the offseason, Mo goes and signs some dependable veteran guys like yourself. In your time here so far, working with the entire staff alongside Wilson Contreras as well, and you said last night you guys just were locked in together. You know, how's that been for you? Uh, it's been great. You know, Will is a guy who he's super competitive and he wants to be the best at what he does. And um, he's worked really hard at, you know, understanding how I like to pitch. I think pitch come really helps in that regard when I have the, when I have the transmitter on my glove and I can, you know, the first couple of times we pitch together, you know, I could kind of, you know, take him through in a bat every now and then and, and, you know, call a pitch just here and there just so that he gets an idea really quickly of what I want to do. Um, you know, last night, sure, there were a couple of times that I, sh I shook. Um, but I throw six pitches. You know, he's not gonna he's not gonna get the right one every single time. Um, but I can really kind of tell when a catcher's locked in when I have in mind first pitch changeup or first pitch curveball, and that's the button that he pushes. You know, that's that's a pretty good sign to me that a catcher is, has done his homework and he's locked in on what we're trying to do. And that happened quite a bit last night. Kyle Gibson joining us right now on the fast lane on 101 ESPN. Kyle, that's interesting. So, how is that rare, or do you think that you know because you, you, you've been different in sp different spots before? How how quickly do you you and another battery mate get on the same page throughout the course of a season? It seems it seems quick since you guys just met uh, this past this past uh, spring training. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just when the conversations happen, and and you can you know walk each other through what you're thinking, right? Um, you know, when I face. You know, six of our guys at home, I think in my third to last outing, whenever it was in spring, right in the middle of spring, um, you know, even after facing Wilson in that game, you know, sitting there talking with Pedro Pajes and, and just going over the inning, and, you know, Willie would come up and listen in, and Willie would sit there and he asked me about the sequence that I threw to him. You know, um, I mean, that's that's what you have to do to, to really get on the same page of the pitcher, and he's putting in the work. Kyle, we often hear about pitchers and, and pitching staffs not wanting to face a lineup three times around. Uh, what were the, those conversations, or were there any conversations as you headed out for the seventh inning with Ali? 
Uh, there was no conversation going after the seventh. Um, I, I think in that instance, you know, we needed um, as many innings as I could give, uh, you know, trying to take a little pressure off the pen, especially early in the season here. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting, you know, mix between protecting your starters first season, first start of the year and protecting your bullpen the first week. So, um, you know, thankfully we were able to be pretty economical of pitches and get to the seventh. Um, you know, he came up to me and I, I said I could go out for the eighth and I said I still felt pretty good. And, you know, he said if it was your second or third start, that'd be one thing. But tonight that was enough. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, thankfully it was it was a no-brainer, I think, to go back out for the seventh. I was at the right part of the lineup, you know, right in the middle. Um, I'd had some, some success against that part of the lineup. And, um, you know, the defense won a great double play to get me out of that seventh inning and, and save Libby from having to come in. Kyle, you guys got a pretty good defensive crew over there. And, you know, last night there were some great catches, some great defensive efforts. For you as a pitcher, knowing that you have some of these guys on the defensive side, some, quite a few gold gloves out there and some future gold glove candidates, how does that change your approach or even your pitch selection at times? Uh, it changes everything, when, especially when you get a lead. Um, you know, I, I was telling, you know, after the, the game and the postgame media, you know, I – you don't think too much as a starter when your offense is struggling. Like, you're not saying, hey, I've got to put up seven zeros here to give a chance to win. That's just not, you know, that's something that you can't control and you can't think about. But you absolutely pay attention when they're putting up six runs and you pitch different. You you pitch to the game, and this is just my experience, right? Like, I'm pitching to that game last night, trying to get through seven innings and giving up three runs or less. You know, if I give up another homer in the seventh or a run in the seventh, but I get through the seventh inning, Great. That's my job. You know, hand it off to the bullpen with the three-run lead was my thought there. Um, you know, there was multiple instances. I can remember one. Uh, it was in the third inning when we were up four to nothing or four to one. Um, you know, I had a three-one count on the, the left-hander Polly, and I threw a four-seamer right down the middle, and I just said, all right, you know, we got a four-nothing lead here. I'm, you're putting this ball in play. I'm not walking you. You might hit a double. You might get a hit. But, you know, you give your defense a chance, and, and that's something with a good defense you can do as a starting pitcher with the lead. No doubt. Kyle Gibson, Cardinal starter, is joining us right now here on 101 ESPN. Um, Kyle, we know that one of the foundations that you're that's near and dear to your heart is one that you and Adam Wainwright have been close on. It's Big League Impact. What's going on with the uh, with the latest with Big League Impact and what events do you guys have coming up? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, it's uh, I know St. Louis fans are no stranger to Big League Impact, so it's, uh, it's cool walking into a locker room where, you know, everybody knows about it and, and uh, it's just a seamless seamless movement that keeps going um you know may 19th we have our top golf event that uh is scheduled for chesterfield top golf um you know it's earlier in the year than i've ever done it so that'll be really cool to, to have an early in the year event um and and have fans out there with a lot of the guys playing some golf and, and uh enjoying ourselves and then um you know just like they've done here every year we've got our uh, all win campaign going where um, Miles, Tommy, myself, Helsley, and I think I'm missing somebody too, um, are donating for every team win. And then I think a couple of, a couple of us are even donating for a personal stat. So um, you know, I'm going to donate for every strikeout I get. And then for every team win we got, um, you know, people can go to bigleagueimpact.org and uh, go check those out. And, and we'd love for them to partner with us and donate. And, you know, we'll be giving away a lot of autographs and tickets and stuff like that throughout the year to, to those who jump on board. Beautiful. Well, Kyle, we appreciate you. Great pitching last night. Looking forward to your next start already. And uh, best of luck with Big League Impact. And thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate you. See you when we get back. All right. Thanks, thanks Kyle. Kyle. It's our pleasure. Kyle Gibson. Excellent. Uh, thoughts on the interview that we just had with Kyle Gibson? Plus, we'll do home run, you know, our home run um, game with Jamie already up 3 nothing. <sighs> And beat the streak. We also need a new beat the streak contestant. So if you want to play beat beat the streak, just type in BTS to the 314-399-9646 Air Comfort Service text line. And you'll have an opportunity to play beat the streak. That's all coming at you next.
Beautiful. Auto Centers Nissan Herculaneum, over 700 vehicles all in one location. That may sound uh, absurd because if you go into other dealerships, you may go to the dealership and you, you say, hey, I saw this online, saw this vehicle online, I'd like to take a test drive. And they're like, ah, that car's not here. That's in our other location. You got to drive 40 miles or we'll go get it for it. No, not at Auto Centers Nissan Herculaneum. They have every vehicle right there, unless it's brand like brand new when they just got it in. But typically when they put it posted online, they'll have it available available for you it's a test drive so if you're in the market for a new nissan ultima new nissan rogue or pathfinder they've got them different make different uh styles i should say different price points financing options as well for everyone that walks in the door whether you have great credit bad credit they will finance the vehicle for you they also have the 30 day return promise within 30 days if you're not satisfied, bring the vehicle back. They'll give you a refund and, you know, set you up with something else that you like. Complimentary lifetime warranty as well. One-year complimentary maintenance on all new Nissans. If you're not in the market for a new Nissan, you're looking at maybe a pre-owned vehicle. They've got different makes and models. Check them out online, autocentersnissan.com. But when you head out to Herculaneum, tell them Stalter sent you. It's Auto Centers Nissan. hit baseballs all of my successes depend on me you ready to hit the hits just keep on coming and his first big league hit is a bullet up the middle time to play beat the streak here in the fast lane on 101 espn and we have a new beat the streak contestant the listeners got a grand total of two thus far um but we've got Grand Francis Fan Club, a.k.a. Sam. Sam, what's up, yeah. Sam? Hey, how's it going? It's going great. Love the name, man. Thanks. Sam or Grand Francis Fan Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> I just wanted you to clarify. Yeah, That's I appreciate you allowing me to clarify. Both. You're yeah. welcome. All right. Sam, uh, who, who would you like tonight for Beat the Streak? Just got to get ahead. Uh, let's go with Donnie Boy. Probably a good call after last night's game. So, Brandon Donovan off the board marsh are you at two you sick son of a yeah i'm at two as well okay go for it um we heard a lot of good stuff about wilson Contreras. he had a good game last night so give me big willie style to record a base hit tonight All in right. the three spot carry i believe you're up to one i am does it have to be a card it can be anybody right it can be anybody i'm gonna go hassan kim all right 
That's a little bit random. No, it's not. He's okay. three for three for yeah, six. Yeah, he's been great. <laughs> Actually, can I change my no, pick? No, no, no. You cannot. Right, no. Too late. Oh, for five against you, Darvish. <laughs> there you go. Too yep. late. I took I took Xander Bogarts last night. He had two home runs off of uh, Kyle Gibson. He get go for over, so over go for. Jamie, are you is Jamie at one? Yeah, I nice. got oh, yeah, Gorman last night. Oh, there you go. Yeah, nice. You had him for a home run too. No, and oh. Donnie for yeah, Donovan. Run. That's why he had the three oh, points on us. Uh, that's right. Remember, I wanted to double down with Donnie. Yeah, you did. I wanted the home run and the hit. Yeah. I'm gonna go Paul Goldschmidt tonight. Good call. I think he times up old you. He's going to at least get a base hit. Nice. Um, I'm struggling. Maybe I, you are. I don't have any hits thus far. I'm, I'm still looking for Luis Arise <laughs> in the lineup. Play him soon. Don't worry. <laughs> couple, couple days. <laughs> I got to get going here so I can take Luis Arise on Thursday. Uh, I'll take <laughs> Nolan Arenado. A couple of good swings last night. He's got some good numbers against you, Darvish. I'll take it's hitting for average. Nolan Arenado. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. All right, uh, Sam, hopefully we'll talk to you again tomorrow, man. Good luck. Thanks. There you have it. Now, we played the lineup game-ish earlier. <laughs> we hacked it to hell. You don't want to miss that. that. was bad. We had to get to Joy Vitale, so we did not have an opportunity to play. I don't believe what I just saw. Well, somebody's on the board. That'd be the one and only Jamie Rivers. Yes. He had Brendan Donovan last night. Hey, just a reminder, because yeah. we, we went over the rules when we first talked yep. about this, but then people were texting in like, whoa, wait a second here. What's going on? It's any home run mm -hmm. at any time you collect points. Yep. So Donovan last night. And we have three tiers. And we have yes. three tiers. You you choose RL Chalk, Paul, I, you know, i.e. Paul Goldschmidt. He hits a home run. Great. One you only get one point. Now, if he hits three home runs... You get three, three points. points. But Jamie went with Brendan Donovan, who was in Tier 3. We all took a Tier 3 candidate last night. Jamie was the only one that had the home run with Brendan Donovan, so he's up 3 nothing on everybody. So, Jamie, it's up to you. All right. I uh, I got a gut feeling about this guy. I got a and uh, I feel it's going to be very similar to Donovan last night. Alec Burleson. I think Burley runs into one that just gets mm. over the wall by about three or four feet. There you have it. Andrew Marsh, to you. Yeah, uh, this guy has three home runs <sighs> against you, Darvish. <sighs> Give me Arenado. That's terrible. You're unbelievable. <laughs> what you are know you what? talking about? I had a backup plan because I knew one of you two, or one of you three, would take Nolan Arenado. I'm going to go Jordan Walker, this first of the year. Now, Walker's, what, a, a second tier? Yes. So is Burley, right? I believe so. Yes. Okay. You got it written down over there, Anthony? I do. Uh, yes, Burleson is two, Jordan Walker a two, there you Nolan go. Arenado a one, as is Paul Goldschmidt, who's who I'm taking. Oh, there you go. I'll take Goldie. I'll Ooh, take RL Chalk. Burley. I got Burley. I need a home Just run. to get on the board here. Three to two. Burley's going to get two home runs. Nah, 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 nah. Wow. So we just got done talking to Kyle Gibson. One of the things that really stood out to all of us was how and you asked him the question about Contreras. Obviously, there was a lot of um, teeth gnashing over. Wilson Contreras a year ago, Kyle Gibson rave reviews on working with Wilson Contreras. He it wasn't just lip service. He was talking about specific instances in which him and Contreras have been on the same page, worked well together. He told us about in spring training how he faced Wilson Contreras and Contreras went up to him afterwards and wanted to break down, wanted Kyle Gibson to break down how he attacked Gibson mm -hmm. or how he attacked Contreras. So there's Wilson Contreras not only trying to figure out how to get into Kyle Gibson's head so that he can call a better game, but also working on his own game as well. The one word that I used for Kyle Gibson earlier in the show stands again as after we talked about he's a he's a pro. Yeah. He's a professional. And so is Wilson, Wilson Contreras. So I thought that was interesting. What else did you guys take away? Yeah, so for me, I, I knew this already, but hearing from Kyle Gibson that Contreras is just a like, super, like, uber competitive guy, I think we knew that. And the part that I liked, actually loved, about what Kyle Gibson said about working with Wilson Contreras was that he at times would wear, he wears the pitch com at times himself to select the pitches that he wants so that Wilson Contreras knows then what pitches 
Kyle Gibson wants to throw in certain situations. And Gibby even alluded to the fact he's got six pitches. And how the heck can Contreras know exactly which pitch to pick all the time? So he says, yeah, I shook him off a few times. But then in working together, we figured out, you know, we've known now what the sequence is or what I would like to throw in these situations. Mm -hmm. To me, that's leadership. Mm -hmm. That's a veteran guy that came in knowing that last year there was talk about the pitchers and Contreras, Contreras, and the pitchers and the, eh, yeah. the lack of chemistry. And he just took the bull by the horns and just said, you know what? We're going to fast forward this chemistry. We're going to make it so that we know exactly what we're thinking mm -hmm. at all times. And if we're, if we're on the wrong page, I'm going to shake you off until you find the right pitch. And then at that point, put it in the database and right. know that in this situation in the future, that's the pitch I like to go to. Yeah. So I think to me it was Great stuff in breaking it down, but to me it showed true leadership from a veteran guy. Mm -hmm. For me, I like the fact that he said he told Ali, I can go out there for eight if you need me to. Like, I, they finished the seventh and said, I, I got enough to go get you eight. He pitched 94 pitches last night, but the fact that he was willing or felt able to go out there for another inning, and Ali said, you know, first game of the year, your first game, no, nah, but if it was second or third, possibly. I like that because yeah. to me that's that's a guy that wants the ball that wants to go out there and finish what he started don't lean on the bullpen because you know those guys can get worn down if your starters aren't going enough innings and that's what they were brought here for to eat innings and to perform at the level that he did last night he said it i i don't want to give up 64 home runs but if i can get 31 more starts like that i'll yeah. take it yeah. because that was a damn good start last night yeah, i, I thought funny. he did a great job the, the other thing, too, Anthony, just to jump in quick, kind of piggyback off of, like, pitch selection, we asked him about his approach and his pitch selections with the defense mm -hmm. behind him. Because I wonder, like, Cardinals have a good defensive yeah. club. How does that change things? I love that he basically said, hey, uh, we're up 4 nothing right now. Yeah, he's going to attack. I'm not walking you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw you the four seam, and you've got to hit it. If you do, I've got the defense mm -hmm. that can back me up. I love that. Yeah. You're not, no cheapies, man. You're not, you may hit one into the gap. You may hit a double, yeah. but you ain't, I'm not but walking you. not giving you. up the walk. Absolutely. No, yeah, no, no free bases. It's Fast Lane on 101 at ESPN. We're off a little early tonight. We got NIT semifinals. Oh, can't miss that. Indiana State and Utah. So we've got to get to bet the board. We've got to get to uh, three stars of the day, criticisms, compliments. It's all coming up next here on 101 ESPN. Anthony, you and I talk about mentality all the time and just how much they have helped change our lives. I had somebody come up to me at the rink at the Enterprise Center and kind of pull me aside and ask me about mentality because they're like, oh, I'm feeling a lot of those things you guys are talking about. I feel like, you know, I just want to know, like, does it really work? And mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I was like, let me tell you something. It is the greatest thing ever. And he talked about the different locations and whatnot. But I just told him, I said, listen, dude, go in there. They're honestly going to treat you like family. They're going to ask you all the questions. They're going to talk to you to tell them what you're telling me. And then they're going to do a full blood panel. And then you're going to know exactly what the recipe is to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I loved explaining that to them. Well, that, that's kind of what you did for me because I, I saw it. I saw how much you were working, how, how run down you were. You're talking about not getting into the gym, that you want to. All these things you want to. And you're, pride, you're a prideful guy. You're competitive. You, want, you wanted to be at your best. Well, finally, you walked into mentality. And it didn't take long. And all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, what's your secret, dude? You dragged me down to mentality. And it was hard. It wasn't, it was, you didn't really have to drag me because I, was, I already saw the proof. Uh, on Saturday, man, I, I you know, helped clean the house. Outside, grass, all that stuff. It was 5 o'clock. I was still chomping at the bit. Like, what else do we have to do? That, that wasn't me a year ago. I was dragged down. I might, did, might have done one of the things I did on Saturday. I love mentality. Got to head down there. One of two locations. And tell Jamie, uh, tell them that Jamie and Anthony sent you in there, too. South County, Chesterfield. Jamie off to go to the Chesterfield location. I off to go to the South County. They're both great. But if you can't get in there in person, you just want to check them out online, lowtusa.com. It's mentality.
For you listeners out there that are seeking excellence in your home renovation, please visit my friends at E&B Granite. Uh, they are the trusted name for all renovations when it comes to kitchens, bathrooms, outdoor spaces. They have great selection, too, of any of the cabinets you're looking for, flooring that for all kinds of different tastes. There's uh, different colors. There's different patterns. All of it is guaranteed to bring new life to your living space. Let's not forget about the countertops, either. They have all kinds of different countertops. They've got marble. They've got granite. They've got soapstone. And all of that is on location. So please get down to 6135 Manchester Avenue and check all of it out. Talk to the sales representative. uh, Let them know what you're trying to accomplish with your home space, whether it's your kitchen, your bathroom, or outdoors. They are going to make sure that you are completely taken care of, and the technicians are awesome. The installation is so smooth. They do such a great job of taking out all the old stuff, installing all the brand new stuff, and the very first time you see your renovation, you're going to think you're in a showroom. That's how good e and Granite is. So please uh, give them a call. Tell them that Jamie Rivers sent you in. Book an appointment by using 314-645-9300. That's 314-645-9300. Or you can always visit e and ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Salika. Heating and cooling. The Cardinals won last night 6 to 2 over the San Diego Padres. They'll be back in action later tonight, 8:40 first pitch as Miles Michaelis takes the mound going up against you Darvish. We also just got done talking with Kyle Gibson who had a stellar performance last night. If you missed that interview, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or check out the free 101 mobile app. Just head to the podcast page. You'll find all of our interviews and full shows there. And it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. We also talked with Joe Vitale about Jimmy Snuggerud, who decided that he will go back to Minnesota for his junior year. Also talking about the Blues as they defeated the Edmonton Oilers last night, 3-2 to two in overtime. The Blues will take on the Nashville Predators on Thursday. Pre-game starts at 6, puck drop is at 7, and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. Tonight we have the NIT semifinals, so we're getting out of here a little early. Pre-game for that starts at 545. We have Bet the Board, three stars of the day, criticisms and compliments all coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling. Independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning Dealer. ESPN. We're off a little early, as Marsh just told you in the Sports Center update. If you miss anything from today's show, though, you can always download the podcast available at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 ESPN mobile app. It's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Gary <laughs> Davis, Jamie Rivers, playing hands. I don't know what the hell's going on. Gary wanted hands. to reach you. Yeah. I mean, hey. Fingers interlocking. interlocking. Interlocking fingers. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Never hand on hand. That's just weird. No. Yeah, okay. very true. Keep yep. Uh, Marsh. For the next time. <laughs> Anthony, cut the board, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Who Here won we go. last night? I did not. I did not either. Jamie and I won. Ah, J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Uh, Marsh, go for it. <laughs> all right. I'm looking at the Cardinals and Padres tonight once again. And I think something's 
not broke. There's definitely no need to fix it, right? So I'm going to go to the strikeouts once again, and I'm going to go with the over three and a half for Miles Michaelis. Jamie. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go out. The Golden Knights are playing the Vancouver Canucks, and in a strange turn of events, the Canucks are plus 110 in this game. So I'm going to go with the Canucks in this game over the Golden Knights. Thank you very much. All right. I am. Oh, is it on me? Yeah. Is it on you? No. Okay. All you care. I'm going to go Golden State Warriors because they got to win. Mm -hmm. They got to win to get in, to stay in. And so they take on the Dallas Mavericks, and I got uh, minus 104. Okay. Why not? Uh, let's see here. Why don't we go with the Texas Rangers? Over the Tampa Bay Rays. Rays struggling right now, especially pitching-wise. Zach Eflin won great in his first start. Give me the Rangers plus 132. So it's an underdog category of play. There you go. There's uh, by the board. Marsh, what do you got for the criticisms and compliments? Yeah, so earlier in the show, Jamie described the Blues as being a cat. Mm. Whenever you want them, they don't want you. Correct. And whenever you don't want them, they like to snuggle up against you. That's yeah, yeah. what the blues are. From the 314, that analogy by Rivers about the cat makes me think of Billy Madison. And I feel dumber for having to listen to it. <laughs> oh, well, I would disagree. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Yeah, seriously. I would disagree with that. <laughs> Obviously, he hasn't been around a cat. No. Uh, cats are it's not getting exactly what you say. Life. Right. Nah, Very true. Probably. That's why they're so uptight, maybe. <laughs> Sure. From the 636, the lineup game is turning into the sports six pack. It takes oh. about two to three segments to get yeah. through it all. Yeah. Is that our fault? I don't think that's our fault. I mean, nah, I wouldn't I mean, come up to play this game in Atlanta. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have that segment. We wouldn't that be a burn segment. Yeah. Forget it. Right. Copy yeah. and paste. Yeah. <laughs> and and win. And win. Mm. Sounds yeah. like a plan. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have to deal with the Sierras. Nah. The Michael Sierras entering your lineup. Siani. Siani. You heard me. <laughs> Sierra. That's Russ's wife. <laughs> Michael Sierra. <laughs> Russ is cooking. Pittsburgh. He is. <laughs> I don't know what he's cooking. He's cooking, he's cooking man. man. Uh, uh, we've got a text from the 314. First show I've listened to almost every minute in a while. Great show today. Okay. Well, thank that. you. All right. Welcome back. Yes, I don't know where thank you, you went, very much. Welcome. Well, it's the first full show, so maybe it's been more, like, incremental. Yeah, I'd like to see a better effort, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to watch the <laughs> listen to the full show and tell all your friends, too. Yep. Every Turn day. on all their radios mm -hmm. in their homes. Every single one of them. Every day. But if they haven't... You can go to listen to the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Brought right. to you by Dobbs Tire Auto Centers. From the 636, great interview with Kyle Gibson, guys. Thank you. He sounds like a class act. We need to remember that if slash when things aren't quite as good as his excellent start last night. Yeah, yeah good call. Me. I agree. He's... I'm not, you, not Anthony. I heard oh, you, Gary. Gary. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Texter, and thank you for listening. Glad we're talking to you. <laughs> From the 618, great interview with Kyle. Now for the crap in the sandwich. Perfect oh. illustration of how little you guys know Thank when you. you are a ne when you are negative of spring training or selective games. Mm. They are men, not machines, except for Albert Pujols. Yeah. When you guys are of a fair mind, pretty good content. All right, then from now on, guys, here's the deal. Okay, Kerry, Anthony, right. Andrew, listen up. From now on, when the Cardinals start spring training. We're not going to talk about one thing, Cardinals, okay. the yeah. entire time. Good call. Don't because say a word. we're going to talk football. If we have an opinion <laughs> that's positive, we get the old, it's only spring training crowd. If we now, apparently, if we talk negatively about someone in spring training, it's only spring training crowd. So guess what? We're not going to talk about friggin' spring training anymore. That's on you. Yeah. You you sure good luck well. with that. There's you your Cardinals it. content. And if you want us to be, uh, if you want us to be kind of, you know, even keel about stuff, as you alluded to, hey guys, go ahead. Uh, why don't you ask me something about last night's game? Anthony, what'd you think of the game last night? Well, it was only one game, Jamie. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. yeah. Next segment. <laughs> Gary, go ahead. Ask me a question. What did you think about the game last night? The start from Kyle Gibson. Well, again, it's only one start, Gary. We just have to see how this plays out. Mm -hmm. What about the Jordan Walker and the play he made in, in right field? Yeah, it's early. You know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see 
how it plays Still out. Still only counts for one out, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> we can do an That's entire show like that. Radio. Ah. <laughs> but no, I can't talk about spring training. What the hell? We, we wait all freaking winter long to finally talk about the Cardinals, and now we're being told we're not allowed to. Get them, Jamie. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> All right, time for the three stars of the day. He was actually kind of nice early on. Uh, yeah, you know what? Times change, Box. <laughs> Nobody's safe. <laughs> Nobody's safe. Go ahead. Third star of the day. This guy gave you fits in the lineup game. He's batting eighth tonight for uh, your St. Louis Cardinals, Michael Ciani. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, they're going with the actor there, playing center field. No, no left field. Left field no, I saw him in super bad. He yeah, did a nice job. He, he certainly did. Second star of the day goes to an underrated character that is a part of Alice in Wonderland, Bill the Lizard. Bill the Lizard, <laughs> huh? Old Billy Liz. Old Billy Liz, they call him. And our first star of the day, he joined the show. He had a great performance last night for your St. Louis Cardinals, Kyle Gibson. Uh, Gibby, 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 Gibby. Great interview earlier today. We should have asked him if it's okay to call him uh, Gibby. Yeah, we should ask like, him that next time. Is that what the Cardinals call him? Do they have a different one? Because some people have said, that's not Gibby. There's only one Gibby. <laughs> NIT semifinals coming at you right now. See you.